Hi everyone. I'm making this video because out of all the conspiracies that are out there, out of all the uh, secrets that people think that they find, this one is actually true. And I'm making this because I've been talking about this for three, four years now, and I wanted to make an all-inclusive video that has everything. A one-stop shop where you can just literally forward this to someone or play it for someone and they will get the entire scope of things. We're gonna go through 6,000 years of history and I'm gonna show you how people are being controlled. This is not fanciful, this is not, um, I don't know what the word is, but this is the truth. And unfortunately, a lot of people will reject it, but the truth has never been, ever in history, the most popular opinion. So expect a lot of blowback for this, but we're going to go ahead and do this. This is going to be a long video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build in little breaks for you to pause. Okay. So I'll build in little breaks. And then when I get to that point, you guys could just pause, discuss this, forward it, share it. I'm going to be doing a big marketing thing at the end of this year. I have everything all figured out. Uh, it's going to be a little theatrical, but it's going to, it's going to, it, it's going to be good. So we're just going to jump right in. So the biggest secret in all of human history. Now, is that fanciful? Is that um, kind of grandiose? I'm going to let you guys decide for yourselves. I'm going to make the all-inclusive case. Before I even tell you what's going on, okay, I want to explain to you what is going on? What is the point of all of this that I'm going to show you? I want to tell you ahead of time so you have it in your head so you can refer to it and I'll reinforce it later. We take for granted that we have calendars, clocks, watches, weathermen. The ancients didn't have any of that. They had sundials. In the Bible, they worked on dream interpretation for harvest. You can just look at Joseph and um, <clears throat> sold to the Egyptians and the slavery and how he became a dream interpreter they had to know things they needed to know that taurus was when you put the plow on the bull and plant as above so below we'll get into that the bible is an encoded farmer's almanac and was the knowledge of staying alive the most important thing it's an encoded farm farmer's almanac and it's an encoded astrology book just like every other historical ancient uh, holy text that has ever been there. And we're going to go through all of it. They would look at the stars and see all the movements and make up stories about them and pass them down to their children, then them to their children. Eventually they learned how to write and wrote them down. And they evolved from Sumerian to Babylonian to Egyptian to Judaism, the Old Testament, then to the Christians in the New Testament, and even further on the Quran. Remember, the uh, well, we'll get into that. My point, once again, is not that those ancient people told literal stories and we we're not smart enough to take them symbolically, but that they told them symbolically, and we are now actually dumb enough to take them literally. So let's go. Here's how we're going to start. The year starts in Aries, guys. The year actually starts in Aries. I'm going to go into why the new year is... Uh, December 31st. It's for it's an astrological reason, but it's dumb. The new year is March 21st. It's the beginning of the spring equinox. So I'm going to start explaining to you. Now, what I have done, so you guys who are new can understand this, is I've taken Ptolemy, the ancient philosopher, his list of 48 constellations that they knew about that he published in 150 AD. And with those constellations. We're going to break down every scripture that has ever been written. So let's start with Aries. You have the ram, the lamb, the shepherd, the ram's horn. These are words that have to do with Aries, Aries being the ram. Triangle, triangulum is in Aries. Draco, the dragon is in Aries. Taurus, bull, calf, ox, cow because the cow is the female bull. I'm gonna go over this twice, okay? But then you have Cassiopeia, which is the seated woman, Andromeda, the chained woman, and the word belt, because Orion's belt. 
Gemini, the twins, brothers, because Gemini are the twins, the little bear, Ursa Minor, the charioteer, chariot, is Origa, the hunter is Orion, the rabbit is Lepus, the deer is Mariga, the camel, Lopardalis, or the camel leopard, is in Gemini, the crab, the scarab, the great bear, the little bear, Ursa Minor, and Major, bees, beehive, honey, dog, Canis Major, minor, donkey, Acellus Borealis, ship, Argo. This will make sense when I actually go through the 12 signs and explain to you, which I'm going to do literally right after I go through this. I'm just giving you guys the words. Leo is the lion, so that's lion, lioness, or cub. Water snake or serpent, which is hydra, pale hydra, remember? The little bear and the great bear. <clears throat> the ship is Argo. Virgo, virgin, woman, wheat, grain, seed, barley, corn, great bear, water snake, sea serpent, hydra, raven, corvus, cup, crater, ship, Argo. Libra, law, judge, justice, the just one, divorce, marriage, court, wine, vineyard, wine press, olive oil, water snake, serpent, hydra, cup, crater, wolf, lupus, ship, Argo. Scorpio, scorpion, betrayer, betrayal, crown, corona borealis, the northern crown, water snake, serpent, hydra, wolf, lupus, ship, Argo. Sagittarius, horse, bow and arrow, spear, horseman, wolf, lupus, altar, ara, crown, corona australis, southern crown, dragon, draco, milk, milky way galaxy. Capricorn, goat, kid, vulture or eagle, that's Lyra, Lyra, an eagle, which is Aquila. Aquarius, son of man or man, baptism, water pitcher, water jar, fountain, stream, river, pond, lake, ocean, sea, dragon, Draco, vulture, eagle, Lyra, eagle, Aquila, swan, Cygnus, sea monster, whale, Cetus. And then finally, you have Pisces, the end of the year. Stream, river, pond, lake, ocean, sea, fish, Leviathan, Dagon, Mithra, two fish, dragon, Draco, swan, Cygnus, sea monster, whale, Cetus. Employ your time in improving yourself by other men's writings so that you shall come easily by what others have labored hard for. That was Socrates. I put in the work, guys at least watch this and then however it makes you feel is however it makes you feel. But this is 12 years of research. Actually, this is more like 30 years of research, but this is only about 12 um, hardcore. So this is the Zodiac, guys. This is what makes up everything. Cancer's at the top and Capricorn's at the bottom. This is how the Zodiac wheel should look. Um, with Cancer, the top of Cancer being uh, the summer and Capricorn at the bottom being the winter. So astrology goes back to the Lascaux caves that we know of, which are 17,000 to 40,000 years ago. Here you see an article saying the Lascaux cave paintings are 17,000 years ago. On the right, you see world's oldest cave paintings shown humans understood complex astronomy 40,000 years ago. What they did was in the Lascaux Caves, there were some teenagers, much like the story of um, the young boy who discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls in that cave. These teenagers went into a cave and they went to the back of the cave and they saw these inscriptions on it like this. This is what they literally saw. You see the bull on the left and the many faces of the lion on the right. Well, in astrology, the bull is Taurus and the line is Leo. So what they did was when they noticed this, they called some people, those people called some people, and eventually some scientists came in. They took a carbon dating sample. Now, I know for a lot of religious people that say carbon dating is nonsense. I will half agree with you on that. You guys are correct. Carbon dating is only accurate up to 50,000 years. Beyond that, it's guesstimate work. But this came out to be 17,000 years old. What they then did was something interesting. They called in an astrologer and an astronomer 
with a computer because we have the technology to do this now. And what they did was they rewound the sky back 17,000 years to see what it looked like. And lo and behold, when they superimposed, they printed it out, and when they superimposed it over the cave, and there was way more drawings than this, by the way, I just chose two. Um, you had the bull on the left and the lion on the right, and the constellations actually lined up. What's even more fascinating is this particular Lascaux cave on June 21st, which is the summer solstice, and only on the summer solstice, the sun would come directly into the cave and bounce off the back of the wall and illuminate this. So it was a man-made cave. These were man-made drawings, and they basically showed the sky as they knew it 17,000 years ago. Do you think we have that ability these days to do that? So there's questions you can ask in the Bible. How Jesus was able to heal the blind, how he walked on water, how he turned water into wine, why he had 12 disciples, why he was betrayed with a kiss by Judas, why he was dead for three days, why is his birthday on December 25th? All this will be answered with astrology. Genesis 1.14 says, let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, the days, and the years. That's literally what this is. That's, that's what everything has been. That's what everything always was and is. It's the hero's journey of the sun going through the 12 zodiac signs. I'm going to show you that. Each zodiac sign is called a house or an era or an eon or a sign. There are many words for it, but they all represent the same thing. So now I'm going to explain to you the 12 signs because I've given you all the key words and you're probably like, what am I going to do with that? But this is going to make a lot more sense right now. I gave you all the key words so that you guys would understand those are the only words that I'm using to break this down. And we're going to show patterns and we're going to show some amazing stuff. So we'll start with Aquarius. The first sign I talk about is Aquarius, which is represented by the man. Well, technically Aries begins the year, but I started with Aquarius because it's closer to the beginning of our year. The story of Aquarius goes back to the story of Zeus and the young boy. So what is the story of Zeus and the young boy? Zeus saw a 14-year-old blonde boy on earth. It's very specific. And he wanted him in heaven with him, but the boy's father wouldn't let him go. So Zeus basically bargained and he gave him this, he gave him that, he gave him animals, he gave him money, he gave him all this stuff, and he allowed the boy to go to heaven. While in heaven, <coughs> this boy, just like in this picture, was serving the gods something called ambrosia, which is the nectar of the gods. It's what the gods drank on top of Mount Olympus. Interesting thing enough, by the way, guys, did you know that Mount Olympus is actually a real place? And more so than that, is that the gods supposedly lived up there and no one in ancient Greece actually just went to the top of it just to confirm. They just believed that. But anyway, he's up there and he's serving them ambrosia out of this water pitcher. Nowadays, ambrosia is what? Tangerine whipped cream salad? But no, back in the day, it was the nectar of the gods. One day he gets so fed up with doing this day in and day out, just serving the gods, that he goes to the side of heaven, just like in this picture on the right. And what he does is he pours the ambrosia out. This causes the flood on earth. This is where the Greeks get their flood story from. Now Zeus, who's usually an angry, sexually deviant god, in a moment of self-reflection, what he does is instead of punishing the boy for what he had done, he immortalizes him as the constellation Aquarius because he realizes he shouldn't have been up there or maybe he shouldn't have taken him. He was so young, this, that, whatever Zeus thought. And that's the story of Aquarius. So again, there's key words because look at this picture on the right. Son of man or man. Now in astrology, Aquarius is the sign of the man, whereas Virgo, the virgin, is the sign of the woman. So son of man, man, baptism, because look at this picture. This is how you baptize someone. Water picture. There's a water picture in it. Fountain. Lots of Greek found, Greek statues were built like this. The fountains. They still are. Stream, river, pond, lake, ocean, sea. This is a little deeper astrology, but Aquarius is actually known as an air sign. It's not a water sign. However, because there, <coughs> there is water in this picture, it is implicit that it explains it to be water. Because there's water in the picture... Of Aquarius, it can be used to explain water. Pisces is a mutable sign. Pisces is actually a water sign. It's a sign of the two fish in the water. 
So whenever you're talking about stream, river, pond, lake, ocean, sea, you're talking about Pisces. Aries is the ram. And in Aries, you have March 21st, which is the spring equinox. It's a 12-hour day and a 12-hour night. It's also the Passover. There's three types of Passovers that occur in Aries. The first and the oldest is the astrological Passover, where the sun on March 21st is going to literally pass over the equator and start to make its height up to the summer solstice. In, <coughs> in Judaism, the Passover is changed and it becomes... The resur I'm sorry, in Judaism, the Passover is changed and it becomes um, the Passover, which is when the angel of death passes over all the houses in Egypt and anyone that doesn't have the lamb. And remember, lamb is a baby ram, guys. Aries is the ram, the lamb. So anyone that didn't have the lamb's blood smeared on their doorposts to show that they were the people of Aries, the Jews are the people of Aries. That's why they blow the ram's horn on the holidays, because it's Aries worship. Uh, their firstborn sons were killed. Now, in Christianity, the passing over is changed, and it's called the resurrection of God's son, or Easter. So ram, lamb, shepherd, or ram's horn is Aries. Now, Taurus is the bull. And when you look at the sky and you see Taurus during the season where it's supposed to be, it's as above, so below. You see the bull up in the sky. Back then, you put the plow on the bull. Now, we got John Deere equipment that does that, but they didn't have it back then. A lot of people still use the bull to plow. So you can plant the seed so you can harvest in Virgo and Libra, which we'll touch on. So whenever you hear bull, ox, calf, or cow, cow being the female bull, you're talking about Taurus. Gemini is the twins. It's the story of Castor and Pollux Troy, whose sister was Helen of Troy, the story of Achilles. So whenever you're talking about twins or brothers, you're talking about Gemini. Answer is the crab, and it's the sideways moving creature. So watch what my iPod does real quick. On December 25th, the sun rises a degree on its axis. On the 26th, it rises an additional degree. On the 27th, an additional degree. Every day, an additional degree. The sun keeps rising on its axis. The days are getting longer. The nights are getting shorter. When it hits June 21st, that's the height. That's the summer solstice. It's the longest day of the year, the shortest night of the year. What it will then do on June 22nd is it's not going to drop a degree or rise an additional degree. No, it's at its height. What it's going to do is it's going to walk sideways for three days and stay at that exact height, just like the crab walks sideways. That's why the crab is cancer. Then on June 25th, it's going to drop a degree. Then June 26th, it's going to drop another degree. Now it's just going to do the opposite pattern and drop a degree every single day. And then when it hits December 21st, it's going to walk sideways for three days again. And then it's going to come back to life December 25th. The sun does this without fail every single year. So whatever, <laughs> in the ancient Egyptian times, the crab was actually known as the scarab, which is um, the beetle, which is why St. Augustine, for all the Christians that quote St. Augustine at me, he famously said that Jesus was the good beetle. And we'll touch on that soon. But you're talking about the crab or the beetle, that's cancer. Now, Leo is the king. It's a lion. It's the king of the jungle or the king of the savanna, the desert, whatever you want to call it. The ruling planet of Leo is actually the sun. So that's when the sun is in its glory, when the sun is home. So whenever you hear lion, lioness, or cub, you're talking about Leo. Virgo is the woman holding the wheat stalk. Remember before when we said that you plant in Taurus? Well, the virgins would cultivate the wheat in Virgo in order to make the bread for the year. So whenever you hear virgin, wheat, grain, seed, barley, corn. Feel free to Google this stuff, guys. All this stuff gets harvested in Virgo, which is um, which is August, September. Okay? All this stuff is Virgo. Libra. Libra is the justice, the scales, the balance, the just one. The reason it's the justice is because, it again, everything is spiritual and everything is metaphorical. Because it's going to judge God's son as it passes over the fall equinox, which is six months to the day after the spring equinox, which is September 23rd, um, and begins its descent into winter, into cold, into death. The Jews always celebrate the new year around the fall equinox. They always celebrate it in, Lib in uh, Virgo. But then what happens? I'll give you this year's example, okay? This year, uh, Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, took place on September 15th. 
Now, what happens eight days, and it's always eight days after the Jewish New Year, you have a day called Yom Kippur, which is the Jewish Day of Atonement or Judgment. We'll count eight days from September 15th. That's September 23rd. That's the first day of Libra. Of course, the day of judgment takes place in Libra. The scales, the balance, the just one. <clears throat> Libra is also wine season which is when you plant for the grapes in Taurus, you could press the wine here. So whenever you hear keywords like law, judge, justice, the just one, divorce, marriage, court, law-related things, that's Libra. Whenever you hear wine, vineyard, wine press, that's also Libra. Olive oil, because it's also olive oil season. That's when you crush the olives to make the oil. Incidentally, frankincense and myrrh, that the three kings who are represented by Orion's belt, bring, are both olive plants. So that's pretty interesting. So all law-related things, all wine-related things, grape-related things, and olive oil-related things, that's Libra. Now, Scorpio is the scorpion. He is the betrayer. When a scorpion bites you, it leaves an imprint in your skin that looks like a pair of lips, or when it stings you. It literally looks like a, 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 a kiss. And it's why the mafia has the kiss of death. It's why Jesus was betrayed by Judas with a kiss. He could have stoned him. He could have hugged him. He could have shook his hand. He could have pointed at him. He betrayed him with a kiss. This is why. Now, here's the thing, the metaphor. The scorpion, you know, once it attacks you, it leaves lips. But within those that kiss, there's poison. So it's the metaphor. It's the betrayal. So the sun is judged in Libra, it's betrayed in Scorpio, and finally in Sagittarius, this is where the bow and the arrow shoot the sun and inflict further punishment on the sun. This is where the sun dies. Why? Because on December 21st, the sun is at its lowest point. It cannot rise any lower. Remember? It's at its height in the first day of Cancer, and it's at the bottom, the last day of Sagittarius, uh, December 21st. And it's going to walk sideways for three days. So the ancients would look out into the sky and they wouldn't see the sun because it wouldn't cross over the horizon. So what they would do is they would say God's sun was dead. And then it walks three days sideways, just like the crab in cancer. So now God's sun remained dead for three days. We're on December 25th or the birth of the sun because it rises an additional degree and it starts to make its way back to the top. It's born again the light of the world, the light of the world, the only begotten sun. So whenever you hear horse, bow and arrow, spear or horseman, you're talking about Sagittarius. And then finally Capricorn. Capricorn is the goat because he likes to climb the mountain. So take a look here at the wheel that I have on the right. Remember, Cancer's at the top, Capricorn's at the bottom. Well, if you start Capricorn crawling up December 25th, right? It starts crawling up the zodiac wheel going to the right a degree a day till it gets to its height in Cancer and then walks sideways for three days and then drops a degree a day and then makes its way back to Sagittarius, walks sideways for three days, comes back to life in Capricorn. It starts to climb up the great mountain of the zodiac in Capricorn. So why is it a goat? Because there's no animal out there that climbs the mountains like the goat. If you've ever seen a mountain goat on a two-inch ledge. So these are all deeply encoded metaphors. But now, when you go to church, people, there are keywords or names, I should say, that Jesus has given. And it's all astrology. But you don't realize it. These are his, these are his names. These, this is what you've come to notice. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you right now. When the sun is in Capricorn. He is called the scapegoat of Israel. When the sun is in the sign of Aquarius, the man, he is called the son of man. When the sun is in Pisces, the two fish, he's the fisher of men. And it's also why he feeds the masses with two fish. When the sun is in Aries, the ram, he's known as the lamb of God or the good shepherd. Cancer, the scarab, remember? St. Augustine called Jesus the good beetle. In Leo, he is the lion of Judah. When the sun is in Virgo, the lady holding the stalk of wheat, he is born of a virgin, 
and he's called the bread of life. Libra is the scales of justice. He is known as the just one. Then he's betrayed in Scorpio. He dies in Sagittarius, December 21st from the bow and the arrow, also represented as the spear. I'll get into that for you guys. And it's also why he's worshipped on the sun day. Remember, the Jews worship on the Saturn or the Saturn day because they go back to Saturnalia worship, whereas the Christians change it and he becomes the sun day. Now, look at this picture of Jesus on the left. It's a stereotypical picture I just ripped from the internet. The sun is always behind him because he represents the sun. The two fingers up like I'm holding right here, this is an ancient Kemetic peace sign. This is the original peace sign. The fingers are together. It's unity. This sign right here is John Lennon, Winston Churchill. It's the V for victory. It's a war sign. The fingers are separate. This is the true peace sign. Whenever you see Jesus doing this, or you see Baphomet doing this, or you see Buddha or Vishnu or any of them doing this, they're telling you they're peaceful. The white Jesus picture is actually a guy named Caesar Borgia, his face, the bastard son of Pope Alexander VI. Rodrigo Borgia of the Borgia Illuminati family bought his way to the papacy. <clears throat> and when he got there, he realized that about 80 years prior, the printing press came out. So he just started mass producing pictures of his son as the face of Jesus. Now, Borgia or Caesar Borgia was a horrible human being. He killed his brother slept with his sister among other things and he is the face of christ that everyone sees now the crown of thorns wrapped around the heart on the outside and the heart is always on the outside represents the rays of the sun the heart outside the body represents the toroidal field or the torus field which we'll get into very very quickly here are four pictures of jesus that you pull the sun the sun the sun the sun <coughs> the two fingers up in the second picture, there's a Knights Templar cross behind the sun, but it's the same thing, the same face and the sun. Incidentally, you see the holes in his hand? That's incorrect. That is not how people were crucified. If I were to do this to one of you guys and, and crucify you and put nails through your hands, what's going to happen is that eventually what's going to happen is your entire body weight's going to slump forward because what happens is, when you're on the cross, you do not die of blood loss. You die of asphyxiation because you can't breathe. So what's going to happen is you're going you're gonna to pass out. You're going to move forward. The nails are going to rip through your hands, and you're going to fall forward. They did it through the wrist, but they still pushed this lie right here that it was done through the hands. Here's baby Jesus. Look at all these pictures. The sun's behind his head. The sun's behind his head. And if you look, you'll see Polaris, the North Star. And you'll see um, Joseph and or Jesus wearing, a lot of times you'll see the red and the white. Look at this. Here's the red and the white. Do you want to know why? Because the Bible is also an alchemy book. And I'm going to get into this a little bit later. What is red and white? Red and white in alchemy is called the alchemical marriage. And what that means is it's the mix between the red king and the white queen. And to break it down even simpler for people who aren't familiar with alchemy, it's when you mix sulfur with mercury. See, sulfur is the white and mercury is the red. So that's what that's showing. The sun behind the baby's head, the baby's head. We'll get into that picture on the top left towards the end. What does Lord mean? Lord is a title from the 13th century English around Chaucer and the Canterbury time, Tales times which means loaf giver. That's who was in charge of divvying up the bread. It was called Lord. Now, the word Lord comes from the old English 13th century word, lard. Well, what is Christ? Christos is a title. It's not Mary Christ, Joseph Christ, Jesus Christ. Christ is Christos, as written as the New Testament was originally written in Greek. It wasn't written in Hebrew. Christos means anointed one or oil. So follow me here. Christ is Lord in a different set of circumstance. Whereas Christos or oil is lard in a different set of circumstances. This would be the etymolo etymological breakdown. This is the torus field I was telling you about. You're in the middle and the toroidal field circumvents you. It looks like an apple, right? It circumvents you six feet. This is why during the pandemic, the elites tried to keep you six feet apart because they didn't want you interacting with someone. Because when you're within six feet of someone, 
you know that they're there. If you're not looking at them, <clears throat> and you know someone's coming up behind you, they broke your toroidal field. That's how you know they're there. You're not psychic or anything. Or some of you might be, but you're not psychic. If, if you could feel someone coming behind you, they broke your electromagnetic field of the heart. When you're interacting with someone within six feet. This is what it looks like. It forms a vesica Pisces in the middle, the sacred chalice. Now, here's Jesus on the left. Here's Caesar Borgia on the right. They're not spitting images, but you see where he gets the facial features from. It was a lot different back then. Now, before the Shroud of Turin was discovered in 525 AD, almost all paintings and drawings of Jesus were shown as a young, beardless man. It's interesting, right? Seems that everything changed when Caesar Borgia came into the picture. So now that I've given you guys the keywords uh, <coughs> for the signs, and we understand the signs a little bit better, let's start going into some scripture. So are you guys familiar with Proverbs 16, 18, pride cometh before the fall? Sure. And if I were to ask a Christian to define that, they would say that you shouldn't get too boastful about anything. You should remain humble because you could set up your downfall. That's an interpretation. But astrologically, how does that play out? A group of lions is called a pride. Pride is the lion. Lion is Leo. Leo is in July and August. That comes before the season of the fall. There are multiple meanings. These are play on words. In Micah 5.2, this is my namesake. This is where I get my name from. But you, Bethlehem Ephratah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. However, you guys have to understand Hebrew too. It's very hard to have a discussion with somebody who doesn't understand and or read Hebrew. Because this is the language that they used. You got to understand words. You got to understand the breakdown and what they mean. Bethlehem is a combination of two words in Hebrew. Sure, it's a city, but it's a combination of two words. Bet means house, and lechem, which means bread. So the house of bread. This is Virgo with the wheat stalk, the virgin. So the Savior will come from a virgin. The Savior will come from Bethlehem, the house of bread. The house of bread is Virgo with the wheat stalk. Virgin. Does that make sense? I hope so. Deuteronomy 32. He gave them honey from the cliffs and olive oil from the rocky ground. He gave his people butter from the herd and milk from the flock. He gave them lambs and goats. They had the best rams from Bashan and the finest wheat. They drank the best wine made from the juice of red grapes. But Jeshurun became fat and kicked like a bull. There's 10 signs here. 10 signs in this one paragraph. But let's go over it real quick. He gave them honey from the cliffs. I mentioned this earlier when I said beehive bees are in cancer. There is a group of stars. It's an asterism. It's a closely knit group of stars, kind of like the Pleiades. They're very closely knit. And it's called the beehive cluster, and that's in cancer. So that's where the honey metaphorically comes from. Cancer is the beginning of summer, the first day of cancer. Olive oil, <coughs> I mentioned that was Libra. The milk, and I mentioned the Milky Way galaxy before, the Milky Way galaxy's center, and you guys should be able to point out the Milky Way galaxy. You guys, if you don't know anything about astrology, should at least be able to point out Orion's belt and the Milky Way galaxy. At the very least, you should be able to do that. The Milky Way galaxy's center is in Sagittarius, which is the beginning of winter. So from the first day, Cancer, the beginning of summer, to the first day of winter, that is your land of milk and honey. It's the right side of the zodiac. It's not a place on earth. It's a metaphor for the heavens. He gave them lambs and goats. The lambs are Aries, right? Baby lamb is a baby ram. And goat is Capricorn. They had the best rams. Again, that's Aries from Bashan and the finest wheat. Well, the wheat is Virgo, the lady with the wheat stalk. They drank the best wine made from the juice of red grapes. That's Libra again. But Jeshron became fat and kicked like a bull. That's Taurus. Okay, so now I have the zodiac wheel here, and I'm going to teach you how to navigate it when we decode. Jesus led his disciples to the Mount of Olives after his last Passover so that he could teach them a few more things, pray, then wait for Judas to betray him. While walking to the Mount of Olives, he gave the parable of the true vine. Now, Passover takes place in Aries. Find Aries on the map. It's all the way on the left, guys. Now, what happens right next? 
right there he walks to the Mount of Olives. Well, olives, remember, are Libra. How do you get from Aries to Libra the quickest? You go across the wheel. These are known as opposing signs or cross signs. There's different names from them. This is a pattern. It goes directly across the wheel. It's the opposing sign. Now you're in Libra. While you're in Libra, they're waiting for Judas to betray him. Well, when is the betrayer, guys? What's next to Libra? Scorpio. That's the betrayer, right? With the kiss. So you go from Aries to Libra to Scorpio. So this is opposing sign and connecting sign. Those are the only patterns you're going to see. It's never going to randomly talk about a bull and a, <clears throat> and a fish because that doesn't make a pattern. It's always going to do this. So again, we start in Aries. We go across to Libra. We go to the next sign. We're waiting for the betrayal, which hasn't happened yet. Because it hasn't happened yet, you're still in Libra. While you're in Libra, Jesus gives the parable of the true vine. And the vine has to do with grapes, which has to do with wine, which is harvested in Libra. So that's how you use the wheel to do this. So let's get into some more stuff. Genesis 1-7. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. The firmament. A lot of people, what slide am I on? 48? <clears throat> let's go back to this one. The firmament, a lot of people say, is a dome over a flat earth. That's impenetrable. That is a mistranslation. It's just wrong. That's not what it is. The firmament, if you look at this picture of the zodiac right here, you guys see the dividing lines between the signs? Those don't actually exist. If I look out into the sky right now, I'm not going to see breakdowns of signs. I'm not going to see like a wall in the heavens that breaks a sign down. No, no, no. These mention, um, these represent something else. What they represent is the three-day time period where one sign hands over the energy to the next. Some people call them cusps. Some people call them handover dates. There's different words for it. It's a blending of energies, and I promise you I will get back to it. I just want to finish my, my thought with this one. So let's read this again. And God made the firmament and divided the waters, which were under the firmament, from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Well, look at this snapshot I took right here of Aquarius and Pisces. Aquarius with the water and Pisces in the water. Remember the two fish in the water and Aquarius, the man with the water? The firmament divides the water from above from the water which is below. Is this star poetry, guys? Or is there a giant ocean being blocked by a dome in the heavens waiting to crash down on us? causing another flood. Revelation 4, 7, the first living creature. And if you guys notice, I'm jumping from book to book to book. And I have broken down all of these. It's on my website, um, which I will get to later. But I have broken down every single one of these books. But I'm just giving examples from everything, even Revelation. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. First living creature was like a lion. That's Leo. The second was like an ox. That's Taurus. The third had a face like a man. That's Aquarius. The fourth was like a flying eagle. To explain the eagle, I got to go a little deeper for you guys. In astrology, the Scorpio scorpion is the belly crawling creature, right? It crawls on its belly. It's the lowest form of life on earth. What is the first thing that metaphorically God does in the Garden of Eden after the serpent deceives Eve and Adam? He takes away its legs so it has to slither on its belly. It's a punishment. In fact, in Mexico, during Santa de la Muerte, people get all dressed up during the holidays and they get on their belly. They're in like suits and they get on their belly and they crawl to church. It's a punishment. However, Scorpio evolves eight times in astrology, but its evolved form called the ascendant is the eagle. What is the eagle? The eagle is the highest flying form of life on earth. So you go from the belly crawler to the highest flying form of life on earth. The eagle will evolve again and become the phoenix. And what is the story of the phoenix? The story of the phoenix is the story of a flaming ball of life, a bird, a flaming ball of life that dies, like the sun dies, December 21st, and then is risen from its ashes, the resurrection. It's the same story. So Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, and Scorpio. Those are the four fixed signs of the zodiac. Now, 
what is a fixed sign? You have three different types of signs in the zodiac. You have the first sign, which is the cardinal sign. Okay, so there's 12 signs total. There's four seasons. So there's three signs in each season. Four times three is 12. The first sign in the season is the cardinal sign. That's why there's cardinals in church. If I were to take one of those signs, you can break them down into three 10-day segments called deacons. That's why there's deacons and cardinals in church. It's all encoded astrology that they don't want you to know about. Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, and Scorpio are the four fixed signs. You have the cardinal sign. The fixed sign is in the middle. Why? Because it's fixed in the season. Leo is in the dead of summer, Taurus, spring, Aquarius, winter, and the eagle or Scorpio is in the fall. Now, here's the other thing, too, about this passage. Leo, the lion, and the man Aquarius, we were just talking about opposing signs. They're opposing signs. Taurus and Scorpio, they're opposing signs. So is it more likely, let's read this again, the first living creature was like a lion, the second was like an ox, the third had a face like a man, the fourth was like a flying eagle. What's more realistic, guys? There's going to be a four-headed animal in the heavens. They're going to come down to usher in the apocalypse. I know that's not exactly how it's played out in Revelation. I get it. I'm just summarizing. Or it's just making this X through the zodiac wheel. A perfect pattern. Two opposing signs. Four opposing signs. These are the fixed signs. If I were to turn this one sign to the left, this X, it would be a cross. And it would be all the cardinal signs. <clears throat> And the interesting thing about the, um, hold on one second. Go to Ezekiel 10, 14. Each of the cherubim had four faces. One face was that of a cherub. The second was the face of a human being. The third, the face of a lion. And the fourth, the face of an eagle. The same thing. Revelation 12. Let's stick with Revelation. A great sign appeared in the heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its heads. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to earth. Again, a pregnant woman in the heavens, a dragon about to attack her. These are the times of the end. And people literally believe this, by the way. People believe this is to come. And if you challenge that belief, they get very angry. So let's challenge that belief. A woman clothed with the sun is a sun clothed in Virgo. Remember, everything is spiritual. Everything is a metaphor. A woman clothed with the sun is a sun clothed in Virgo. So the sun is in Virgo. If the sun is in Virgo, the moon will be at her feet. So to explain this one. The zodiac is 12 signs. There's a 24 hour a day clock. The sun spends two hours a day in each sign. It's just simple math. If you were to put the sun in Virgo, that would be between 4 and 6 p.m. It's not quite 4 right now. It's only about 2.30, but the sun is still out. So if the sun is still out, isn't the moon metaphorically at her feet? You know that the moon is still out. But metaphorically, the sun is at her feet. The moon is at her feet. If the moon is up, the sun is at her feet. Another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous dragon. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to earth. Left is uh, The picture on the left is Draco. Look at the tail. Its tail goes from Aries to Sagittarius. That's four signs. That's a third of the stars out of the sky, the 12 zodiac. Remember, you can't look out into the heavens and not see one of the 12 signs. It encases us. That's what this is. The tail is four signs long. Four out of 12 is one third. The tail sweeps a third of the stars out of the sky. Revelation 7, 4. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. There are plenty of Christians out there, and there are plenty of um, Jehovah's Witnesses out there that believe very strongly in this 144,000. This gets into manifest destiny, predetermination, all that kind of stuff. But there's a, a much simpler explanation because the Bible was also influenced by the East. There are seven chakras. The root has four petals. The sacral has six. The solar plexus has 10. The heart has 12 and the throat has 16, which equals 48. 
The third eye chakra is represented by 96 and only has two petals because it's two times as powerful as the lower chakras. So 48 times two is 96. The crown chakra is a thousand times more powerful than the lower six chakras. When you add the lower six, you get 96 plus 48 equals 144. And you times that by 1,000 and you get your 144,000. What they're actually trying to tell you is that when you've activated all your chakras, that is when you get to go see God. That's all. That's what they're telling you. They're giving you ancient, ancient wisdom and you're taking it literally. Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Hold on a minute. So be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So the sheep is Aries. Look at the wheel again. It's all the way on the left. The wolf is the constellation Lupus, which I mentioned earlier, which borders the Libra line. Those are opposing signs. The serpent is Ophiuchus. We didn't touch base on Ophiuchus yet. Ophiuchus is a Vedic and sidereal astrology 13th sign. It has to do with the actual, actual size of the constellations as opposed to uh, a breakdown of an even 12 signs. I'm going to put it to you guys this way just so that you can understand and we can move on. Um, if I were to get in a car and one of you were to get in a car and we're going to the same place and we both leave the same house, our GPSs might take us different ways, but we're going to end up at the same place. That is the difference between Vedic and sidereal and which is basically the same thing and tropical which is the 12 signs astrology but ophiuchus is the serpent bearer that sits between scorpio and sagittarius the dove is one of the evolved forms of scorpio which i mentioned earlier along with the eagle and the phoenix so now you have aries to libra right the sheep is aries the wolf is libra <clears throat> Libra, Scorpio, and Ophiuchus are three signs in a row. So you have an opposing sign here, and then it makes a pattern of three in a row. This is all about patterns, people. So I've given examples of astrotheology in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. I've been accused of cherry-picking verses from the Bible to prove a point. So let's take a much longer passage and see if we can decode it as well. This brings us to the book of Job. What is the story of Job? Job was a righteous man. He was the most righteous man. He had land. He had animals. He had family. He had money. He had a home. He had a wife. He had everything. Satan goes up to God and says, the only reason this man is holy and praises you is because he has everything. If you took it away, he would curse you. And God thinks about it and tells Satan, all right, I'll bet you on this. You can take whatever you want from him, but you may not take his life. That's the only caveat. So little by little, everything starts dying. He starts losing everything. And at one point, he's just sitting down on the ground. He might have even had boils on him. And he cries out to God for a very long period of time. Now, it's important to understand, guys, that the book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible. I'm going to get into the Council of Nicaea later um, and the Senate of Jamnia, too. But the uh, the reason the books were placed in order, but the book of Job is actually way older than the book of Genesis. It was just placed in the specific location during the Council of Nicaea. It's the oldest book. And Job is crying out to God, and God finally answers him. And I'm going to read you his answer. Job 38, 32, God says, can you lead forth the Maseroth? This is deliberately not translated for people in the King James Bible. And in other forms of the Bible, it's left as the word Maseroth. The word Maseroth literally means the Zodiac. Maseroth over time becomes Mazelot, which survives in Judaism today as Mazel Tov. You can only imagine how old Mazel Tov is. So think about how old the word Maseroth is. Mazel Tov means good fortune from the stars. So what is the Lord's challenge to Job? He says, can you bind the chains of the Pleiades? Can you loosen Orion's belt? Those are open talking about constellations openly then he says can you bring forth the constellations in their seasons or lead out the bear with its cubs the constellations are the zodiac above and the bear and its cubs are ursa major the great bear and ursa minor part of the big dipper then he says who can tip over the water jars of the heavens well guys who's tipping over the water jar of the heavens it's aquarius right literally pouring out the water or the um ambrosia from the heavens 
Do you hunt the prey for the lioness and satisfy the hunger of the lions? That's Leo. Who provides food from the raven? The constellation Corvus, meaning raven, borders on Virgo. Do you watch where the doe bears her fawn? Mariga, meaning deer, is located in Orion. Orion is located between Taurus and Gemini. Who let the wild donkey go free? That's Acellus Borealis, meaning donkey, and is located in Cancer. Will the wild ox consent to serve you? That's Taurus. The wings of the ostrich flap joyfully. That's Lambda Achille or Al Thaliman, which means two ostriches in Arabic. Do you give the horse its strength? So we know right there the horse is Sagittarius. But let's see if we can get further confirmation. It laughs at fear, afraid of nothing. It does not shy away from the sword. The quiver, that's where we know it is. The quiver. What is a quiver? It sits on the side of the horse with arrows in it. The man with the bow and the arrow on the horse. That's Sagittarius. Does the eagle soar at your command and build its nest on high? Aquila is the Latin name for eagle and is a constellation a few degrees above the celestial equator. There are a few different types of eagles. A Scorpio evolved, Aquila. Um, I'll give you two examples. The serpent. You have Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer, and you have uh, Hydra, Hail Hydra. In fact, there's a passage in the Bible where they're talking about how the serpent will bite the heel of the horse and the rider will fall off. Well, Ophiuchus is the serpent bearer. It's a man holding a basket like this, and the serpent's head is facing this way out of the basket. Well, if you look at that constellation, it's facing Sagittarius, so the serpent's head will bite the heel of the horse, and the rider will fall off. <clears throat> Can you pull in Leviathan with a fish hook? Leviathan was an ancient fish god. That's Pisces. God's entire retort to Job is astrology. Let's go into Psalms real quick. He sends forth springs in their valleys. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and wine which makes man's heart glad so that he may make his face glisten with oil. The high mountains are for the wild goats. He made the moon for the seasons. The sun knows the place of its setting. The young lions roar after their prey. The springs are Aquarius, the water, remember? The wild donkeys are Acellus Borealis, which are in Cancer. The cattle is Taurus the bull. The wine and the oil are both Libra. The wild goats are Capricorn. The moon for the seasons and the sun knows the place of its setting is openly talking about the sun and the moon. The lions roar after their prey are also Leo. Let's do Psalm again. Psalms again. Psalm 147. He gives to the beast its food and to the young ravens which cry. He does delight in the strength. He does not delight in the strength of the horse. He does not take pleasure in the legs of a man. He makes peace in your borders. He satisfies you with the finest of the wheat. He gives snow like wool. Ravens are the constellation Corvus. The horse is Sagittarius. The man is Aquarius. The wheat is Virgo. And the wool from sheep is Aries. Answers to the questions at the beginning. Remember these questions, guys? How Jesus was able to heal the blind, how he walked on water how he turned water into wine, why he had 12 disciples, why he was betrayed with a kiss by Judas, why was he dead for three days, why is his birthday on December 25th, how Jesus was able to heal the blind. Well, in the story, in the Bible, Jesus walks up to the man, or the man walks up to him, and he says, I can't see, please heal me. What does Jesus do? He rubs on his face, I believe it's a little bit of mud, um, and cures his eyes. He touched his eyes, and he was able to see. The sun does the same thing because the sun is out right now. When it touches your eyes, you can see everything. When the sun goes down at night, you're blind. How he walked on water. If you've ever seen the sun walk on water, let's say you're fishing or you're at a beach and it's sunset. You see the sun walking across the water. Even Jesus walked on the water. So that's two examples. And then Christos. Christos is the oil, the anointed one, right? Doesn't uh, oil also sit on top of water? This is known as a triple entendre, and that's what you find. That's how deeply encoded this book is. How he turned water into a wine, this is a procedure. This is not a literal parlor trick. See, what happens is <clears throat> the reason God is considered a man and earth is considered a woman for all of history has to do with one thing, guys. It has to do with the rain, the sacred fluid. God's sacred fluid comes down onto earth. In Hebrew, the word is shemen, 
we get the word semen from it. God's sacred fluid comes on earth and impregnates her. And from her belly, trees, vegetation, life grows, food. So what happens is in Taurus, as above, so below, you see the bull, you plant on earth, right? Bull in the sky, plow on bull here. You plow and April showers bring May flowers. Well, that's still Taurus. And then you plant the grapes and then it grows and it grows and it grows. And then in Libra, you pick it and you turn it into wine. That's how you turn God's water into wine. Why he had 12 disciples. Each one of the disciples represents one of the um, zodiac signs. In fact, I would even go so far as to say the 13th disciple would be um, John the Baptist, right? Who would represent Aquarius, the man with the water pitcher. Um, um, Judas would be Scorpio, right? The betrayer. Um, Thomas would be Gemini, the twins. Now, how's one guy going to be the twins? His name is Thomas Didymus, right? Thomas Didymus. Well, Ta'om, or in Hebrew, or Tom, Ta'om, Tom, is means twin. And Didymus in Greek means twin. So twin, twin. These are the twins. That's Thomas. And then I'll give you one more example. The fourth one would be um, um, Peter. See, Simon was his name and they called him Peter or Jesus calls him Peter. But that doesn't make any sense because Michael becomes Mike, Ronald becomes Ron, um, Thomas becomes Tom. You know, these make sense uh, as nicknames. But from Peter or Simon to Peter doesn't make sense unless you understand astrology. And to understand astrology, you have to understand his backstory. See, Simon was a fisherman by trade and the fish is Pisces. And the ruling planet of Pisces is Jupiter or Jew, Peter. See, each one of these disciples represents one of the zodiac signs. Maybe I'll make a video about that one day, but I was not, I'm just trying to give you guys a couple examples here. Now, this is important for you guys to understand this. This science that I'm explaining to you only works for people in the Northern Hemisphere. And there is a reason for that. The Egyptians, Jews, Christians, and Muslims are all based out of the Northern Hemisphere. For example, June 21st, the summer solstice, is actually the winter solstice in Australia, New Zealand, much of South Africa, and South America. What that basically means is, remember how I told you Taurus and Scorpio are opposing signs? Well, if you were to follow the signs in the bottom half of our world, what you would realize is you do not plant or you do not put the plow on the bull during Taurus. You have to go six months to its opposing sign because we're diametrically opposed in weather. So instead of putting the plow on the bull in Taurus, you put the plow on the bull in Scorpio. And all you need to do to figure out what relates to what or what goes to what is flip it six months. That's all you have to do. But it doesn't stop there. It's not just random passages in the Bible that can be decoded this way. We're going to go through the entire book of Matthew to show how deep this runs. So what I've done is I've put the zodiac wheel on the left and I've used the red highlighter so that you could follow along. Matthew 3, 2, repent of your sins and turn to God for the kingdom of heaven is near. Each gospel begins at one of the four major points of the zodiac and ends at one of them as well. The two solstices and the two equinox when connected form a cross. This is known as the cross of God's son. The kingdom of heaven is Leo, whose ruling planet is the sun. This is the only sign the sun rules over. The closest of the four points is June 21st in Cancer. This is where the gospel starts. This is the firmament right here. You see how I have a line on, on the line between them? This is the firmament between Cancer and Leo. It's the beginning of the kingdom. There's a saying in the Bible that says the firmament shows God's handiwork. The firmaments are the dividing lines between signs. Now the next passage, Matthew 3, 4, John's clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. If we take the most famous drawing of a man, Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, and superimpose it onto the Zodiac, we can make sense of this. And for the Christians who are out there who are going to tell me that the uh, Vitruvian Man wasn't around when the Bible was written, so it couldn't possibly be the case, Honestly, I could have used a stick figure. I could have used the dog from Paw Patrol. It doesn't matter. I just happened to use this because I like the way that it looked. 
but it has no bearing on what I'm trying to explain. Now, cancer being the head is why he eats the wild honey. In cancer, there is a star cluster called the beehive cluster. Bees produce honey. The mouth is in cancer. It would eat the honey. You see? Leviticus 11, what's clean and unclean to eat? All flying insects that walk on all fours are to be regarded as unclean by you. There are, however, some flying insects that walk on all fours that you may eat. Those that have jointed legs for hopping on the ground. Of these, you may eat any kind of locust, Katie did, cricket, or grasshopper. There's a locust, by the way. So when you guys see people, a pound of grasshopper is three times as nutritious as a pound of beef, trying to feed you bugs. Now you guys know that it's biblical. That's why they're trying to push bugs. World Economic Forum and all of them to try and push bugs into the mainstream food. Anyway, now so we were just, we were in Leo, right? We, we started in Leo. That's the kingdom of God. We we're in Cancer with the beehive cluster eating the honey. Now we're in Gemini. Notice that that's a pattern of three signs in a row. A little lower down on the body is the clothes made out of camel hair or camelopardalis, which is in Gemini. Camelopardalis is a constellation that consists of camelos, which is camel, and pardalis, which means leopard. In fact, the giraffe in the ancient days used to be called camelopardalis because they looked at this big goofy thing with spots and they said, that's a camel leopard. What else are you going to call it? So right now you have the head and the upper body so far. Now we're in Taurus, so that's now four signs in a row. Moving a little lower on the body, you'll get a midsection, which is where you would wear a belt. Taurus represents the bull, and the female is the cow. And the cow is where you would get the leather. Regarding the belt, Orion's belt sits between Taurus and Gemini. Next would be the baptism. So how are we going to go from the beginning of Leo to a water sign to signify the baptism? You would go across the zodiac. Cross signs, as they are known, are the signs of opposite location. For example, Aries and Libras are cross signs. This is very important. A sign's two most, well, three most important signs are its two neighboring signs and its cross signs. So if I'm looking at this little wheel right here and I see Cancer at the top, its opposing or cross sign would be Capricorn at the bottom. Its neighboring signs or connecting signs would be Gemini and Leo. And those are the only kind of patterns you're going to find. Not only is this encoded with astrology, but it makes patterns in the sky. Here we see how it makes a leap from one firmament to another. The man with the water pitcher in Aquarius is personified as John the Baptist with the water. Now, guys, it's important to know that when you're at a firmament, for example, here, Cancer and Leo at the top, if you're between the two signs, you could talk about either sign. That's how this is broken down. If you're just in one sign, if you're just in cancer, you could talk about the crab, you could talk about the scarab, you could talk about bees, honey. But if you're in Leo, that's the lion, right? But if you're between both of them, you could talk about both. So <clears throat> how it makes from lead from one firm into another. The man with the water pitcher in Aquarius is personified as John the Baptist with the water. It's important to note, too, that John the Baptist and Jesus are always exactly six months apart, always. When you think about the fact that Jesus is born on December 25th, don't worry, we'll touch base on that later, Christians and guys and girls, and rises a degree a day, right? Because it's born on December 25th, and it's going to walk alongside the wheel climbing a degree a day. Then John the Baptist has to be born on June 24th and decrease a day. This is why in John 3.30, John says, he must increase, but I must decrease. It's also why St. John's Day is exactly six months to the day of the birthday of Jesus. Open up a Catholic calendar. They hide this right in plain sight, guys. So the next story is the temptation of Jesus. So we're going back to the Cancer Leo firmament of July 24th. Well, what happens in the temptation of Jesus, right? <clears throat> He's tempted for 40 days. Count 40 days. It's that simple. Count 40 days from July 24th. Takes you to September 2nd. That is right in the middle of Virgo. The lady with the wheat stalk, the wheat, the bread, all that. This is the next passage, Matthew 4, 3. If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Here we see mention of the bread, which tells you that the son is in Virgo. The next passage, Matthew 5, 17 and 22. I did not come to abolish the law. And if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. So we were just in the Cancer Leo. And now we're in Virgo, so that's three signs in a row. And now we're in Libra, because he said judgment. 
and law. Remember? That's four signs in a row, guys. Matthew 7, 15, 16. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep. And can you pick grapes from the thorn bushes? The sheep is Aries. And the grapes are Libra, remember? Again, these are opposing signs, always with the patterns. A ton of connecting signs or opposing signs. Matthew 13. Later that same day, Jesus left the house and sat beside the lake. The story now moves from Libra to the barrier between Aquarius and Pisces as he is right beside the lake or the two water signs. See, if they had went and said Jesus was in the lake, then he'd have to pick one of the two. He'd have to be in Aquarius or Pisces. But if he's beside the lake, he's between the two. Now, if you look at Aquarius and Pisces uh, firmament, their cross sign is the Leo Virgo firmament. As it's across from Virgo, the wheat stalk the grains. Is it ironic that the next parables are the wheat and the weeds, the mustard seed, and the yeast? Interesting, right? Move right along. Next is the fishing net parable. So now we're just going to go back across the wheel to touch Aquarius and Pisces. And because you're touching Pisces, you can talk about the fish. I hope you guys see how this stuff works now. I hope you're starting to open your eyes and, and, and really understand this. Then Gemini is the sign of two men, technically twins. However, there's just a short mention of brothers in the next passage. He's just the carpenter's son, and we know Mary, his mother, and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. So because we're in Gemini, this ends at the end of Gemini, the firmament between Gemini and Cancer. Do you know why? Because if you follow that across to its cross sign, that's the firmament of Sagittarius Capricorn. That's December 21st. That's the day of death. The day of death is in Sagittarius, December 21st, where the sun dies. How do we know that that's what happens? Because the next passage is the story of the death of John the Baptist. You guys see how this is a, a zodiac that basically encapsulates and, and has all this encoded information, and they wrote stories based on it. Do you guys see this? As I've mentioned previously, death comes at the end of Sagittarius. The firmament of Sagittarius, Capricorn, and Gemini, Cancer are opposing signs. <clears throat> Let's take the sentence, which sounds like it could be in the Bible but isn't. If I say to you, the rulers were divided between war and love, it split the land in half. You could read that as a literal translation. That's just a sentence I made up. But the ruling planet of Aries is Mars, who is the god of war. The ruling planet of Libra is Venus, who is the goddess of love. There is your war and love. If you connect it, it literally splits the land in half. Or the zodiac in half, see? Matthew 14, 17, and 32. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fish. The bread and the fish, Pisces and Virgo, the lady with the wheat stalk, are opposing signs. Also, Pisces is the two fish, which is why Jesus fed the masses with two fish. This is star poetry. This is star poetry that people are taking literally and killing each other over. This is the cross of God's son, son. We were just in Virgo, and now next is Libra, which is law and wine and oil, remember? What stories do we get now? The story of the temple tax, the unforgiving debtor, divorce and marriage, and the parable of the vineyard worker. See, law, 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 wine. It all lines up. Next is Scorpio, the betrayer. This is where Judas betrays Jesus with the kiss. So again, that's three signs in a row. And then here's where Jesus is crucified, Sagittarius. That's four signs in a row. Astrology is a language. If you understand language, the sky speaks to you. And I think this is probably a good point for you guys to just take a quick break. Okay, everyone. So we're back. Hope you took a nice little break. Let's just continue with this. <clears throat> Let's go back to this, which I started this whole thing with. What is the point of all this? We take for granted that we have calendars, clocks, watches, weathermen. The ancients didn't have any of that. They had sundials. In the Bible, they worked on dream interpretation for harvest. They had to know things. They had to know Taurus was when you put the plow on the bull and plant as above, so below. The Bible is an encoded farmer's almanac and astrology poetry book and was the knowledge of staying alive, the most important thing. They would look at the stars and see all this movement and make stories up about them and pass them down to their children, then them to their children. Eventually, they learned how to write and wrote them down, and they evolved from Sumerian to Babylonian to Egyptian to Judaism, Old Testament, 
then to the Christians in the New Testament, and eventually to the Quran. My point, once again, is not that those ancient people told literal stories and we are now smart enough to take them symbolically, but that they told them symbolically and we are now dumb enough to take them literally. That's John Dominic Croissant. Jesus disappears at 12 and comes back at 30. This has been a subject of great debate, but the answer is quite simple, actually. What happens to a young Jewish boy at the age of 12? And some Jews will sit there and say, it's the 13th year. Right. Well, are you not 12 in the 13th year? Especially if you're born late in the year. Right? When was he born? December 25th? It's the end of the year. So if he had his bar mitzvah in, I don't know, June or April, spring, like they usually do, right? Or whenever, he becomes bar mitzvah. He becomes a man. So Jesus becomes a man and leaves to study. He starts his ministry at 30, but why? The ancient Jewish religion has roots in Saturnalia worship. And before it, from before it, that is why their day of rest is a Saturday or the Saturn day. So why 30? Saturnalia worshippers said that you were not allowed to become a teacher until Saturn came back to the point it was when you were born. It just so happens that Saturn takes 30 years to come back. Refer back to Ezekiel at 30 seeing God. Look at this picture right here. Let me, let me maximize it for you. This is Ezekiel's vision of God as it's depicted. And you'll notice a couple of things. You'll notice him kneeling. You'll notice that God is in the sun because God is the sun. Always has been throughout human history. Always will be. The stories just evolve. Now, if you look at the bottom on the right of Ezekiel, you'll see what's known as the tetramorph. It's the four-headed animal. And look at the heads. It's the lion, the bull, the eagle, and the man. Oh, my God. It's Revelation 4-7 all over again. It's the four-headed animal. It's the, the fixed signs known as the tetramorph. On the right of that is the zodiac wheel. Now, the sun tells the hour of the day. The moon tells the day of the month. The zodiac tells the month of the year. In our little location where we are, in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy, there's a perfect calendar for us. That is a fingerprint of creation. You want to talk about God being real? That is God being real. That is a fingerprint of creation that is left. We know that the biblical flood never occurred because there were great civilizations thriving during that time. They kept good records and neglected to mention they were all wiped from the face of the earth. The Chinese Neolithic dynasty... The Egyptians, dynasties four, five, and six. Mesopotamians, early dynastic period. Sumeria's early dynastic, 3A and 3B. Peruvian, Norte Chico civilization, and more. We find a continuous line of culture, construction, art, and historical records that run through the time Noah's flood was supposed to happen. So where are the Christians right now saying it was a regional flood? Moses goes up to get the Ten Commandments, and when he comes down... He sees them worshiping a golden calf. What's more likely? The Jews got run out of Egypt. They couldn't even let the bread rise, which is why we have matzah to this day. They rushed to the desert with just the clothes on their back, but happened to carry enough gold between all of them, found welding equipment in the desert, and built a giant statue, or it's a celestial metaphor. The sun is the gold, and the calf is the bull or Taurus. They were worshiping the sun in Taurus, whereas they are Jews, the people of Aries. So he breaks the commandments, becoming the first lawbreaker because he broke the law when he smashed it. <clears throat> the Lord sent fiery, this is Numbers 21, 4 through 9. The Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. So the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned because we have spoken against you and the Lord. We have spoken against the Lord and you. Intercede with the Lord. <clears throat> that he may remove the serpents from us. And Moses interceded for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it upon a standard and it shall come about that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, he will live. Well, remember, the Greeks were competing at the time for history, for, for being um, the most prevalent people, right? Does it also, a, staff, a snake on a staff, not look like the rod of Asclepius? 
Does it not evolve into the caduceus, the medical symbol that you see everywhere? But even further back, this all goes back to Kundalini Yoga. We'll get into what people call New Age later, I promise. In the year 1367 BC, well before Moses, Akhenaten established monotheism under a sun god in Egypt. Abraham, as the story goes, started the one true God belief, but that's just really not true at all. The Jews are lying to you. In fact, during the time period, there have been found plenty of fertility gods and goddesses dug up in current times that the Jews have made. In fact, Moses is a character who is based on two Egyptians, Akhenaten, who is the basis of Moses, and Tuthmosis, which is where he gets his name, hence Moses. Egyptians kept pristine, meticulous records about their history, even the things that were unflattering or painted them in a bad light. There is zero evidence in the Egyptian records of Exodus, of Moses, of the plagues, of the Red Sea parting. There is zero mention in the Bible of the Pyramid of the Sphinx. Odd, no? In fact, this is one thing that Anwar Sadat actually said to Menachem Begin in 77 during the peace accords. He said, you guys have no history there. Go figure. Simply and always has been describing the path of the sun over the ecliptic as the sun dances its way around the 12 zodiacs. Mithra, born on December 25th, the Immaculate Conception. He is the sun god and Messiah. 12 disciples accepted sins. Was killed and resurrected, becoming God incarnate. Cult includes communion, baptism. Adonis, born December 25th, Greek god of fertility, a.k.a. Babylonian Tammuz, a.k.a. Syrian savior. He was killed and buried, resurrected three days later. Dionysus, born on December 25th as a result of the Immaculate Conception, Greek god of winemaking, a.k.a. Bacchus, a.k.a. savior and liberator of mankind, naturally with communion. Osiris, born in late December to a virgin, Egyptian sun and underworld god, a.k.a. judge of the dead, a.k.a. one of the Egyptian trinity, ruled over 12 kings, betrayed, killed, buried, risen after three days. Horus, born December 25th to Isis as a result of immaculate conception from the spirit of Osiris. God of the sun and light, one of the Egyptian trinity, embodied the resurrection, God equals sun. December 25th, the day of the resurrection of the sun. Every ancient story, every, and I'm going to show you this in this video, every ancient story, ancient uh, text that we consider holy, or that has survived that shows is all telling the same it's it's an anthropomorphic allegorical astrotheological story of the sun going through the 12 signs of the zodiac everything is the same story the egyptian chapter 125 the egyptian book of the dead the declaration of innocence before the gods of the tribunal o swallower of shades those who came forth from kernet I have not slain people, thou shalt not kill. O doubly evil one who came forth from the Berserite gnome, I have not had intercourse with a married woman, thou shalt not covet your neighbor's wife. O he who prospers the common people who came forth from Asir, I have not cursed a god, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Three of the Ten Commandments are mentioned here, literally, right there. Look it up. The rest can be found in the 42 positive affirmations of Mat, which is Egyptian as well. El Azaros is Osiris, who Horus raised from the dead. The Greek name Lazarus equals Eliezer in Hebrew and means whom God helps. It is a strange coincidence, firstly, that the person whom Jesus resurrects happens to be named whom God helps. And secondly, that Eliezer, or breaking down its original components in Hebrew, El Azar closely resembles a combination of the Semitic word for God, El with the Egyptian name for Osiris, Osir. So the story about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead is borrowed. It did not happen. Jesus is the son. These are metaphorical stories borrowed from previous. Now look at this, guys. On the left, the ancient Egyptians used to worship the sun in Taurus. You could see hieroglyphs of the bull with the sun between its horns. Now that population fades. And as the age of Aries comes in, the Jews are the people of Aries. That's why they blow the ram's horn to the sky in the holidays. Then these start to fade in numbers. And then in the age of Pisces, Christians are the people. That's why they have Jesus fish as shown below. This is also why Jesus is able to feed the masses with two fish. The two fish are Pisces. If you take a Venn diagram, which I've done right there, and you look at the Jesus fish, it's right in the middle. And if I were to put two little, uh, two little tails on the top, 
there's the two fish. That's interesting, right? The two fish are in the vesica Pisces, John 21. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, oop, the net was not torn. Now, if you guys understand math, you'll understand uh, beyond a couple things. Number one, we know that Pythagorean's theorem was discovered a thousand years before it was actually discovered. We know this from Sumerian tablets that literally show it. Now, 153 fish is an interesting number, right? Why 153? Well, look at the Jesus fish in the middle. Its mathematical equation is 247 over 153. That's the mathematical, mathematical equation of the Jesus fish. 153 fish. So now, we've seen the history of these three different megalithic groups of people. And now as we enter the age of Aquarius, what do we see? One world religion headquarters set to open next year. You guys have to understand is if this doesn't get out there, there's going to be a new religion in the age of Aquarius. Now we're very young into the age of Aquarius. Technically, we're still getting away from the old Pisces energy, which is, which is belief. It's, it's belief, believing. And we're moving into the age of Aquarius, which is knowing, but we're still dealing with we're, we're in the firmament stage right here, which is the leftover stage. Um, remember how I told you guys that um, there's a 30-day sign, and the last three days and the first three days are the firmament transition period? Well, when you're talking about the age that we're in, it's a, it's a slippage. It's a 2,160-year um, age that forms the great year of 12 signs, 25,920 years. So whereas it's only three days in, uh, when you're dealing with two months, think about how long the slippage would be for 2,160 years. It would be 216 years. So it's, it's a period of time where we're still getting rid of that energy. But if we don't expose this, there's going to be a new religion. And, and as the age of Aquarius being the sign of the man, it's going to be merging with machines. It's going to be the evolution of man. This is the Synod of Jamnia. And for people who start wanting to know about sources and this and that, where did you find all this? Uh, the Synod of Jamnia, this that I ripped right here, is straight from the Encyclopedia Britannica, which people used to have and read before the internet. And in it, they'll talk about the Synod of Jamnia. And what it was, was a period of time in 100 AD where the books of the Old Testament, this is 100 AD, AD, the books of the Old Testament were not set in a specific order. They were not canonized. So what they ended up having to do was they ended up having to get a bunch of people together, rabbis, politicians, things of that nature, to canonize the book. This is why the book of Job was placed where it was, even though it's the oldest book in the Bible. And that's where they basically did this. Now, an interesting thing happened, too, because 30 years prior to the Synod, a gospel came out called the Gospel of Mark, 70 AD. It's the oldest gospel. And during the Synod of Jamnia, they actually deliberated whether or not to put the Gospel of Mark in the Old Testament, and they decided against it. Think about that for a minute. Genesis thirty-two thirty, 30, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Well, if you look on the left, that's the eye of Horus. You know how everyone's telling you this is evil, this is so evil, look at these... Look at these Illuminati people doing all these weird symbols. And uh, yeah. I do a video on that that's on my website too. But the eye of Horus actually represents the pineal gland. See, on the right is a sagittal cut. What that is is if I were to take a line straight down here and then open it like this, that's what you would see. You would see this right here. That middle thing that looks like a nipple, that is the pineal gland. Whereas above it, or the eyebrow ridge, is known as the corpus callosum. Now, the interior of the pineal gland has retinal tissue composed of photoreceptor cells and is filled with vitreous fluid, just like the eyes. It's even wired to it. In certain reptiles, it has a cornea or a lens. What is so special about the pineal gland? Well, it has calcium carbonate crystals. And with change in pressure, it causes what's called the piezoelectric effect. What the piezoelectric effect is, is basically if I were to take uh, the calcium crystal, carbonate crystals out of your pineal gland and put it down on a table, let it dry out, and then beat it with a hammer, colors would fly out of it. Basically, you'd see the rainbow. 
The pineal gland releases DMT in two separate occasions in your life. The first time it does that, well, it does it every night. When you're sleeping, when you're dreaming, you're dreaming because your brain is flooding you with DMT. The other time it's released is as your body is shutting down and you're getting ready to die. Your body is flooded with DMT. This is where everybody gets there. Um, they see, you know, family members and Jesus and Mary and all this. These are archetypes that come to you as peaceful things to ease your transition. This is not, that doesn't mean that they're real. Now, here's the thing. In many Buddhist traditions, 49 days is the total mourning period with prayers conducted every seven days across seven weeks. These Buddhists believe that rebirth takes place 49 days after death. The Jews have a 49-day time period too. It's called Lagba Omer where they count the Omer. It's a 49 day time period. The Catholics have it too. It's called the Pentecost. This is after Easter. This is when you get your, your communion and your confirmation and you get all that stuff done. What is so special about 49? It just so happens that the pineal gland becomes visible on the 49th day of gestation on the seventh, on the day of the seventh week. Isn't that interesting? Now here's something even more interesting. The elites right now who are crafting um policies on abortion are capping it at six weeks which is such an arbitrary number why would you cap it at six weeks what why would you do that well here's the thing is that at seventh week the soul is in the body if you were to have an abortion then you are karmically responsible for it however <coughs> if you have it before then the soul is not in it you are not karmically responsible for it and believe you me, these people at the top know this, and that's why they're doing this. It's like the six weeks, uh, the six feet with the, um, with the restrictions. So hell, the flaming inferno, right? Let's talk about, let's talk about hell, Lucifer, Baphomet, and um, Satan. Let's talk about that for a minute. Hell is the flaming inferno, right? Well, how do we detect pain? The nervous system, the brain, the spinal cord, the nerve endings, and the neuron. So let me ask you a question. When you die and your spirit leaves and you give that body up that can sense things like hot and cold, how are you going to burn as a spirit in a lake of fire? How are you going to feel it? You're not. You know why? Because hell is the flaming inferno has been inverted. Again, what they do is they like to invert and pervert. That's what they do. Hell is actually winter on earth. I'm going to show you that. The idea of a fiery pit where you burn for all eternity is ridiculous when you think about it. Logically, hell is actually winter on earth. Why? Well, it's cold. The vegetation and beautiful flowers and plants are dead. The trees shed their leaves and bear no fruit. It's freezing cold out. People tend to get sick more often. Dangerous animals, if they're not hibernating, are starving, starving and scrounging for food. It's dangerous to humans. The Italian word for winter is inverno. You flip a letter and pervert it. Inferno, pervert its meaning, you get the concept of hell. The picture on the right that I have uh, showing you here is Dante Alighieri's The Divine Comedy. Satan is in the bottom level of hell. Do you see fire everywhere? No, he's in a frozen tundra because his wings are flapping so hard that it's freezing everything over. Dante knew hell was winter, and the Bible even tells you this. And you guys don't know what you're reading. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. When do you gnash your teeth? When do you chatter your teeth? Is it in the cold or the hot? Hell is cold, people. Why Virgil was chosen by Dante to lead through hell. Virgil. The Sibylline records from Virgil's Ecologues, mystic writings, more specifically the fourth Ecologue, which predates Christ, but predicts the birth and rise of a boy who would later become divine and rule the earth. The story of the rise and fall of God's son, yet again. In the fifth Ecologue, Virgil gave praise to Caesar Augustus and Julius Caesar. That's where we get July and August from, by the way, guys. Augustus was the first emperor after Julius Caesar was betrayed. Interesting, too. Julius Caesar, which in English translates to July King, which in astrology, the ruling planet of July, Leo, is the sun. It's another poetic embrace of the rise and eventual slaughter of the sun. Sun. This is why Julius Caesar is so popular, because he embodied the story of Christ. It's also important to know 
that the betrayers of both Julius, of Jesus and Caesar, which are Judas, Cassius, and Brutus, are the three people that are in the lowest level of hell in Dante's Inferno. They didn't do a good job showing this right now. They just showed him with one head. But in, 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 in Dante's Divine Comedy, he has three heads. The two on the side are chewing Brutus and Cassius with their head out. So they're, they're like this. And they're being chewed by the in the middle is Judas and he is head in. So <clears throat> because of all of these almost mystical esoteric writings, it makes sense why Dante chose Virgil to be his tour guide through all the layers of hell. Let's talk about Satan and Lucifer, guys. Satan does not exist. I'm sorry, he doesn't. He's not a red devil with a tail and a pitchfork. In fact, the earliest paintings of him in the 900s, he was actually blue. Hence where we get the Duke Blue Devils from. If you guys are outside of the United States, the Duke Blue Devils are a very famous, very good college basketball team. Consistently. They're consistently good. The Hebrew word for Satan is Hashatan, which literally translates to adversary. In proper context, two competing sports teams are Satans to one another. That's all it means. The Christians will change it and call him the accuser. It's the same thing. Lucifer, he is known as the light bringer. Genesis 1-3, and God said, let there be light. How can there be light without the light bearer? Lucifer is immediately mentioned in the Bible, if not by name, but by action and purpose. Lucifer is also known as the morning star. The morning star is also known as the planet Venus. The reasoning is, is if you go out and you look at the sky just before the sunrise in the east, do this in the morning, guys. Wake up at sunrise or right before sunrise and go look at the sun. You see a bright light above the sun. That's Venus. It announces the arrival of God's only begotten son, the light of the world. Lucifer is also known to have a pentagram. That's his symbol. Continuing with Lucifer as Venus, if you follow Earth and Venus's orbit around the sun in a year's time, they almost connect at five points. You connect that, you get the pentagram. This is what it looks like, guys. This is the pentagram. I could talk about the pentagram all day. The pentagram has been used so many times, but it's hysterical that Christians hate the pentagram because in their religion, it was originally a Christian symbol. Because why? It represented the five points of infliction of Jesus. The wrists, remember, not the hands. The wrists, that's two. The crown of thorns, that's three. The feet, that's four. The spear of destiny, that's five. The spear to check to see if he was still alive. Here's Baphomet on the right. Notice Eliphas Levi's name there. He's also the first person to invent, invert the pentagram point down. And, and the pentagram has meant different things too. For example, um, one point, two points up represents, uh, I forget which one it is. But basically, depending on if there's one point up or two points up, it represents winter or summer. The goat is Capricorn. That's why he has a goat's head. And the man is Aquarius, the sign of the man. They are connecting signs. The ancients knew the divine was both masculine and feminine. That's why Baphomet has breasts. Left brain masculine and right brain feminine. It's not a demonic entity. It's the joining of the male and the female. Just like the next slide. This is the rudimentary symbol, phallic symbol, the original penis, so to speak. Then in the middle, this is the rudimentary sign of the womb, the chalice, the feminine. And then there is the star of David. It's the joining of the two. It's a hermaphrodite, so to speak. Christians will Christians that don't like Jews will tell you it's the star of Remphan and all that kind of stuff. But this is what it represents. It's a hermaphrodite. It's the joining of the male and the female. There is also more sex magic in the Bible than you think. This is a faithful recreation of Solomon's temple. That's what you're looking at right here. This is Solomon's temple. But now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert it 90 degrees. I'm going to explain to you what it is. <clears throat> This is a view from above. It's important to note that Solomon is not a name of a person or it's a combination of three words for the sun. Sol or sun in Latin. Om, which is the sun, which is the light of the syllable Om as advised in the Upanishads. On was the city of light or Heliopolis in Greek. Sol, Om, On. So let's look at this. What do you see if I invert it? Ooh, what are we looking at here? This is a penis entering a vagina, people. This is sex magic. Jakin or Yakin and Boaz at the bottom are the testicles. The holy place is the shaft. No, the porch is the shaft. 
Now, the porch is the base. The holy place is the shaft. The holy of holies is the head. And then right where the, 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 the penis hole is, the, the, where the urethra would come through, um, is the ark. That's where the DNA Torah information is stored. And then what happens is it fills with shemen or semen into the vagina. And then where you see those two openings right there, right? The store chambers, in the store chambers, that's where the ovaries would release the egg. This is sex magic, guys. This is sex magic. What about Samson and Delilah? This is where you need to understand Hebrew. Samson in, is Shimshon, which means little son. Whereas the root of Delilah is Lila, which means night. When you say goodnight to someone in Hebrew, you say Lila Tov, which literally translates to night good, but it means good night. The story of Delilah is that she cuts Samson's hair, which takes away his power, and he ends up eyes gouged out and blind. Think about this for a second. If Samson is little son and Delilah is night, this is a story of the night beating away the sun and overtaking. That's what this is. The eternal battle between the sun and night, or set from the ancient Egyptians. That's why we have a sun set to this day. Samson and Delilah. Jonah and the body of the whale. In Hebrew, the words are dagadol, which translates to great giant fish. He's in it for three days. It's the three days you see recurring in the Bible over and over again. The sun walking sideways like the crab for three days. Daniel and the lion's den. It's a story revolving around two signs in astrology. Daniel the man, Aquarius, and the lions, which are Leo the lion. In the zodiac, they are opposing signs. Abraham and Sarah. Abraham's name was Abram before he was made Abraham. Abram is a combination of two words. Abba, which means father in Hebrew. And Ram, which means Ram, Father Ram, Father of the people of Ares, the Jews. In fact, Abram goes back to Brahma, and Sarai, or Sarah, goes back to Saraswati. This is influence from the Hindus. The Hindus are just as old as the Jews people. Lot and Lot's wife in Sodom and Gomorrah. In the ancient times, people were paid with salt. It's where the word salary comes from. Salt. Why? Because it preserved the meat. And when you killed a cow and they didn't eat it in a day, it would go bad. Salt kept it viable for longer. There was no refrigeration back then. Salt was the highest currency aside from gold or silver. So when Lot's wife turned into a pile of salt, you have to put yourself in their position at the time of how important salt was to understand this. Think about leaving Las Vegas, gambling, hookers, debauchery, all that fun shit, and then turning back and taking one last look and turning into a pile of gold coins. That's the story. That's the metaphor they're trying to convey. There is a town in Israel called Megiddo, which a third century church was found under a church. Basically, some guy was walking through it. It was an old church. And he put his foot through. He almost fell through. But when they looked through the hole, they realized, oh, there's a huge church under there. So what they did was they dug it up. And then it's one of the oldest churches known to man. It's from the 200s. In the center of the floor is the mosaic of the two fish Pisces because they knew Christ was the Piscean solar deity. Megiddo is also the root of Armageddon, which is where the war, I can't remember if it's where the war on earth and the rapture is supposed to begin or end. I'm sure I can get help with that. But Megiddo is a very important town. And they knew this. We even know who commissioned this, this piece. The Zodiac surrounds Stufetta del Babiana, the papal bath. Why? Why, why? why? I don't know. Like, why would the church lie to you? The U.S. was not founded as a Christian nation. Christianity is the most perverted system that ever shown on man. Thomas Jefferson. I have found Christian dogma unintelligible. Benjamin Franklin. This would be the best of all possible worlds if there were no religions in it. John Adams. The Constitution is the guide which I will never abandon. George Washington. The U.S. was founded upon secular values. But I'll give you a couple more quotes, guys. And the day will come when the mystical generation of Jesus, by the supreme being as his father in the womb of a virgin, will be classed with the fable of the generation of Minerva in the brain of Jupiter. Thomas Jefferson in a letter to John Adams. What influence, in fact, have Christian ecclesiastical establishments had on civil society? In many instances, they have been upholding the thrones of political tyranny. In no instance have they been sent as the guardians of the liberties of the people. Isn't this interesting, guys? Doesn't, isn't this... I don't know, man. The purpose of separation of church and state is to keep forever from these shores the ceaseless strife that has soaked the soil of Europe in blood for centuries. That's James Madison, 
And this is my all-time favorite, guys. This is Thomas Paine nearly 300 years ago. 300! 300 he knew this. The Christian religion is a parody on the worship of the sun, in which they put a man called Christ in the place of the sun and pay him the adoration originally paid to the sun. So when they tell you that the Christian, that the nation was founded on Judeo-Christian values, that's just plain bullshit. They don't know what they're talking about. And I think now would be a good time to take another pause. So guys, get a drink, talk to some people, and uh, I'll be back in a few. Welcome back, everybody. So this is not in my slides, but I just wanted to share with you guys something real quick about Yahweh. Um, Yahweh, uh, yod heh vav Hey, that is the God of the Old Testament, is actually not God. Yahweh is one of many gods, which was lifted directly from the Phoenician Canaanite belief system. He was chosen. And this particular God, up until Abraham and Isaac, or the supposed sacrifice of Isaac, or the about-to-be sacrifice of Isaac. See, here's where the, the Jews and the Muslims, where, where their issue the root of their issue comes in. This is the root of their conflict. Everything can be traced back to this. Jews say that Abraham almost sacrificed Isaac. The Muslims say that it was Ishmael, not Isaac. And uh, this God requires blood. He requires human sacrifice, but he didn't after this. They just transferred it to animals. So it became animal sacrifice. So let's move on and talk about the swastika. Everyone's terrified of it. Remember, invert and pervert. The swastika, if you read Wikipedia, for example, talks about its origin of ancient times, from ancient religions and its peaceful meaning. Again, tweak it a little and pervert the meaning and you get the modern day peace that we see that will never be reclaimed as a peaceful symbol. But it goes further than that. The swastika isn't Buddhist or Hindu, Babylonian or Syrian or Sumerian. It's actually astrology. This is the oldest swastika that we found. It is 17,000 years old, and it is from the Ukraine. This is the oldest swastika. What is the swastika? If you take the Big Dipper on the solstices and the equinox, and you rotate it around Polaris, the North Star, it forms the swastika. Everything goes back to this. Saturn, if you Google when was Saturn discovered, it'll tell you 1610. Galileo Galilei was the first to gaze at Saturn through a telescope. To his surprise, he saw a pair of objects on either side of the planet. Really, though? Really? Because what about the ancient Saturnalia face festival and the basis of the Abrahamic Hebrew religion? This is a flat-out lie. Just like how Julian the Apostate, 1700 years ago, talked about the sun, we think that the helio centric model was Copernicus. Julian the Apostate, 1,700 years ago, he was the nephew of Constantine. Const yes, that Constantine from the Council of Nicaea and uniting Christianity as everything. Julian the Apostate was his nephew. And when Constantine died, he tried to bring everyone back to sun worship. And he got an arrow in his back for it during battle. And it wasn't even from the enemy. It was from someone on his side. You got Pat Tillman. Um, Julian the Apostate, his writings still exist in books. You could buy them and read them. And if you were to do that, you'd find a quote of him talking about how the sun is the fiery chariot that the planets dance around. This is Saturn worship, guys. On the top left, you see what's known as the Tefillin. It's the black cube. The Jews worship Saturn. Right to the right of it, you see the Kaaba in Mecca. Within the Kaaba, you have a meteorite. This is Saturn worship. The mortarboard that you graduate with college, it's a black square. It's Saturn. The Nintendo GameCube is a black cube. The Sega Saturn is literally Saturn is a black cube. The robes that the judges wear, this is all Saturn worship. In fact, it's also earrings, guys. Women were told to get their ears pierced because they had to listen to their God. Their God was L. 
their god was Saturn. El was Saturn. The Elohim are the planets. This is why men wear wedding rings, because they were told to listen and pledge their fidelity in front of God. Their God was El. This is Goblaki Tepe. And there's a section of it, you can probably see it right there, that was an astronomical observatory. Stonehenge is the same thing. The Sphinx, too. What was the Sphinx riddle? Remember, the Sphinx had a riddle, and if you walked by it, it asked you this riddle, and if you couldn't answer it, it would kill you. What was the question? What has four legs in the morning, two legs in the afternoon, and three legs at night? It's a very deep, beautiful metaphor. The answer is man. You're crawling on all fours when you're born, then you walk in life, and then at the end you walk with a cane. <clears throat> There's a saying, and you can kind of see that little hole under the Sphinx's ear. That's a portal that goes into the Sphinx. Now, look at this. If you were to look at the Sphinx, if I were to give you an a, a, a angle from the back, it's very smooth. It's very smooth. It's not sand ridden. It's not coarse. It's not like sand, you know, it's not like, it's not, it's not coarse. It's very smooth. How is that possible? The only way that's possible is if water ran over. And the only time water ran over that area was 12,000 years ago, during the melting of the Ice Age. 12,000 years ago. Now, here's the other thing, too. is If you roll the clock back 12,000 years, that's the age of Leo. Well, the Sphinx was basically a line and a man. Again, those are opposing signs. But the Sphinx would have been facing the constellation Leo because everything was astrology worship. And as we age, enter the age of Aquarius, they're going to find the second Sphinx because everything was done in duality. And that's going to be facing this Sphinx and it's going to be facing the age. It's going to be facing the constellation Leo because remember they're opposing signs. So if they're facing each other, they're opposing signs. What are the pyramids? Well, the pyramids line up with Orion's belt and they're on the energy grid of the world. What are the pyramids? The pyramids are energy portals. There was a man in Southern America or in the South who had a farm and he built a pyramid on it and he planted his crops and he planted some crops in it. The crops that grew in the pyramid grew four times as fast as the ones on the outside. These are energy portals and they hide all this information from you. This is known as the anti kathera mechanism. They couldn't figure out what it was for the longest time. They just had no idea. But it is, and it always has been, a very, very intricate for its time astronomical observatory. So now let's start going into how they use astrotheology against you these days. How do they do that? Well, when do you kill Kennedy? November 22nd, the handover date from Scorpio to Sagittarius. Remember, Scorpio is the betrayer. Sagittarius is the kill. He was betrayed, and he died in Sagittarius. <clears throat> That's when. In fact, two other very prominent people died that same day. Um, two very prominent people died that day. And for the life of me, it's escaping me right now uh, who they were. Um they were writers. Why is January 1st, New Year's Day? Hey, this just happened. Let's talk about it. Neil deGrasse Tyson has gone on record saying nothing special happens on January 1st or December 31st. He's wrong and I've tried to call him out on it. Something interesting happens. It's our new year in the world because at midnight on December 31st, if you look up as high as you can in the sky, you'll see Sirius at its height. That's our dog star. That's our binary star. It doesn't get any higher than at that time. Then what you do is you, you drop it, you follow a line straight down to Earth, and then you continue follow a straight line down to the sun. It's a perfect alignment. Otherwise, we should have New Year's in Aries, March 21st, when Passover and Easter happen, or September 21st, around when the Jews have their New Year's, or the solstices. Incidentally, this dropping down is symbolized by the ball in Times Square going down. Everybody watches the ball drop and have no idea why they're watching a ball drop. Why do they always crash the stock market in Libra? The panic of 1907, October 1907. 
Wall Street crash of 1929, October 24th, 1929. That's a handover date to Scorpio, but it's still within the three-day period. The Black Monday, October 19th, 1987. Friday the 14th, mini crash. Friday the 13th, mini crash. October 13th, 1989. Stock market downturn of 2002, October 9th, 2002. 10% in most of the world's indices dropped, October 24th, 2008. That's another handover date to Scorpio. And isn't it interesting, too, that it's always done in Libra and it's always done when there's a Republican in office? What are the odds, guys? Now, the largest daily point gains, these were all done in Aries, where the sun is going up. So the money goes up. Whereas in Libra, we're being judged. We're being judged. Our money is being judged. We're being judged. That's why they're stealing from us. Roman Catholic Catechism 2116. All forms of divination are to be rejected, recourse to Satan or demons, conjuring up the dead or other practices falsely supposed to unveil the future, consulting horoscopes, astrology, palm reading, interpretation of omens and lots, the phenomena of clairvoyance and recourse to mediums, all conceal a desire for power over time, history, and in the last analysis, other human beings, as well as a wish to conciliate hidden powers. They contradict the honor, respect, and loving fear that we owe to God alone. Why is the Roman church telling you that astrology is evil when it is so clear, so very clear that the Bible is astrology? I found this on Twitter. This is from one of the most Christian people that I follow. Church, don't be discouraged. The real feast of trumpets is actually today for us. The new moon needs to be in the constellation of Libra. This is going to happen on September 19th at 1.20 a.m. Israel time. So it would be at 6.20 p.m. EST for us. Please keep praying and keep looking up. So let me get this straight. This just blows my fucking mind. Let me understand this. So Christians can use astrology to interpret the Bible. But when I do it, it's a problem? I don't know. Make it make sense, guys. Abu Dawood. It is suggested that the Prophet Muhammad stated... Whoever seeks knowledge from the stars is seeking one of the branches of witchcraft, that of which is inherently forbidden in Islam. Interesting. What about the Phoenix Suns, the, college, the professional basketball team? The Phoenix is the story of Christ, the sun, a flaming form of life that dies and rises from its ashes. Jesus was the sun who died for three days and came back to life. What's the woman's Phoenix team? Well, it's the Phoenix Mercury. Mercury is the sign, the ruling planet of Virgo. It's the only woman sign. So how else are things encoded to everyday entertainment? You guys remember the movie Face Off? You got to be a little older probably, but John Travolta and Nicolas Cage, good movie, right? 1990s movie starring Face Off starring Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. Well, what are their characters' names? Nicolas Cage's character is Castor Troy, and his brother is Pollux Troy in the movie. That's literally the names of Gemini, guys. But what about Travolta? His name is Sean Archer. Who's Archer? That's Sagittarius, the man with the bow and the arrow. Those are opposing signs. They embed this into Hollywood. They embed this stuff into everything. There are a ton of characters in Harry Potter that are named after stars or constellations. You have Draco, the dragon, Malfoy, Pollux, Black, which is one of Gemini, Sirius Black, which is our dog star, Andromeda Black, Regulus Black, Arcturus Black, Cassiopeia Black, Orion Black, Cygnus Black. Interesting. Al Gaul, also known as the Demon Star. It's a, it's it's in astrology when you get into it. It's it's a Demon Star. It's always fixed in Taurus, by the way. It's always going to be in Taurus. It has a long history of evil attached to it. In Batman Begins, the evil character's name is literally Raz Al Ghul who gets his name from Al Ghul or Al Ghul. You guys remember the Cranberries? 1990s song video for the Cranberry Zombie. Here's Dolores O'Riordan painted gold like the sun and her head dressing represents the rays of the sun, much like Jesus in the crown of thorns. But is that it? This is the very beginning of the song. But what do you see next? You see the sun on the cross of the solstices and the equinoxes and then you have the little Sagittarius with the bow and the arrow ready to kill it. Interesting, right? Katy Perry's Dark Horse video. Here we see the Eye of Horus, the Illuminati symbol. 
Everybody always says, again, remember this, this, this. It's all nonsense, guys. It's all nonsense. What about this? What are we looking at here? This is Michelangelo's <clears throat> The Birth of Adam or God Makes Adam, right? God gives life to Adam. Well, what are we looking at here? Well, if you look at this picture right here, you can see that what God is sitting in looks really eerie. It looks very much like if I cut a brain in half, right? Isn't that interesting? And do you see where God is sitting? Well, where his ass is sitting is literally where the pineal gland is. That's interesting too. And if you count the cherubs in there or the angels, there's 12 of them, just like the 12 zodiac signs. Or in the anatomical version, these would be the 12 cranial nerves. How interesting. So God from the brain is giving life, pure consciousness. What about Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper? Well, look at them. There's four, there's 12 people, and they're broken down into sections of three. That's the seasons. The first one all the way on the left is Aries. He's wearing green. Why is he wearing green? Because the snow is melted away and things are getting warmer now. Then the next one is Taurus, and then the next one is Gemini. He's holding his hands up. He's showing he has two. He's twins. And then after Gemini, you have Cancer, and then you have Leo. And what is Leo doing? The, the old man, he's pointing to Virgo, the woman. He's pointing to her Adam's apple. He's pointing to her Adam's apple to show that she's not a man. Then you have Jesus, the son, right? And then what happens after Virgo? You have Libra. Look at him. He's making the scales, the scales of justice. This is all encoded in astrology. The only problem is when people back then understood this stuff, because they did, and we weren't dumbed down, they had to encode it in, in secret messages for people to find out because you couldn't openly talk about this stuff. Now, here's the interesting thing, too. When you're talking about the Virgin Mary or you're talking about um, Jesus' mother, she represents the vagina, the chalice, the holy vagina. In fact, this is a little blurry, unfortunately. Let's see if we can fix this. Here we go. Mother, Mar Mother Mary is Virgo the Virgin, the holy vagina that was worshipped, in fact. I actually posted this picture on Facebook a few months back and got banned from going live or joining groups for two months because the bot flagged this as a vagina and said I posted porn. Mother Mary is the holy vagina. Modern day things revolving around astrology. Mermaids. A combination of the man sign Aquarius or the woman sign Virgo and the fish sign Pisces. Aquarius and Pisces are connecting signs. Bullfighting, bull riding. Aquarius the man and Taurus the bull. Running from the bulls too in Spain. Jousting. That's two times Sagittarius. Lion taming. It's Aquarius the man and Leo the lion. Those are opposing signs. Fishing. That's Aquarius the man and Pisces the fish. Those are connecting signs. Or if you're a woman that fishes... Virgo is the woman and Pisces is the fish. Those are now opposing signs, always with the patterns. So the mention of magnetism. Walter Russell talks about everything, and I mean everything being electromagnetic. Electric radiates, magnetism receives. The sun is electric, the male energy, and the moon radiates, the female energy. The female cycle is a 28-day cycle, just like the moon cycle. The moon controls the tide of the ocean, and we're 70 to 95% water. It's stupid to think that the moon doesn't affect us. Even Christians will tell you, if it's a full moon, stay in. They get it. Also, because the sun is male and electric, it's why the male orgasm feels like a jolt of electricity going through your body, while the female orgasm feels like a wave that they can ride over and over again. So I have been told. Homosexuality in the Bible. Oh, this one is so fun. Everybody knows about Leviticus 18.22. However, is it really what is said there? The Greek word arsenokotai shows up in two different versions of the Bible in Greek, but was not translated to mean homosexual until 1946. In the 1800s, the German Bible said men shall not lie with young boys as he does with a woman, for it is an abomination. Leviticus 18.22. Same with Leviticus 20.13, young boys. 1 Corinthians, and the word arsenokotai, and it's important to mention that the Bible was written in Hebrew, 
but the New Testament was written in Greek. 1 Corinthians becomes boy molesters will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you were to grab Martin Luther's original German translation from 1534, they use the word Nabenschander. Nabin is a boy, Schander is molester. The first time homosexual appears in German translation is 1983. Don't ask me, ask King David. He loved Jonathan more than women, 2 Samuel 1 to 26. They kissed each other and cried together, 1 Samuel 20, 41. Jonathan took off his clothes in front of David, 1 Samuel 18, 3 to 4. <clears throat> he kept David with him and did not allow him to go back to his father's house, Samuel 18 to 2. King David was bisexual in the Bible, guys. And guess what? King James, the King James Bible that you all read, the book he came out right before this was a demonology book. And King James was a homosexual too. So do with all that what you will. But it's time you guys stop using religion to persecute uh, gay and lesbian people. Just stop it because the, the, the facts aren't on your side. And you will be judged for that at some point. What about in the Quran? 72 virgins, right? That's what they all do it for. There's a star called 70 Virginis, which borders Virgo. That's 70 virgins. There's one virgin in Virgo, so 71. Plus the virgin you marry on Earth, that's 72. Those are the 72 virgins. It's all astrology. Now, Muslims will probably tell you that you're allowed up to four wives, but you have to be able to provide for them. Otherwise, you are only able to take one. That is the default. But it's not just the Bible. If you don't know, by now, the Bible is not original, you still might have doubts. Here is 6,000 years of ancient holy text, going from three Sumerian tablets, the Babylonian Enuma Elish, the Code of Hammurabi, which is where the Jews get their punishments and code of ethics from, to the Egyptian Book of the Dead, and the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, to the Gnostic texts, all of them to the Quran, to the Book of Mormon, all of it. I haven't included the Ethiopian removed books from the Bible here or the Colburn Bible, but I've done the first book of Estrus and it's the same thing. 6,000 years of holy text astrologically encoded. So we're coming up to the finale, guys. I'm going to go and give you one example of astrotheology through the last 6,000 years. 6,000. And we're going to talk about it. So guys, take another quick break and then come back when you're ready. Hello, everyone again. All right, let's do this. The Epic of Gilgamesh, Sumerian. May the bear mourn you, the hyena, the panther, the leopard, deer, jackal, lion, wild bull, gazelle. May the rivers Ulaya and Euphrates mourn you, whose sacred waters we offered to the gods. May the young men of the great walled Uruk mourn you, who cheered when we slaughtered the bull of heaven. What's the bull of heaven, guys? That be Taurus in the sky? May the farmer mourn you who praised you to the skies in his harvest song. May the shepherd mourn you who brought you milk. May the brewer mourn you who made you fine beer. May Ishtar's priestess mourn you who met, massaged you with sweet smelling oil. May the wedding guests mourn you like their own brother. Ishtar, by the way, guys, is where we get Easter from. She was a fertility goddess. That's why you have eggs. The bear is Ursa Major. The great bear, Gemini and Cancer. The hyena is El Tannin. The hyena and three knots in Draco's tail. That's Aries to Sagittarius. The panther is Elanthopedia. The panther made up of 26 stars. The leopard is Camelopardalis. Camelopardalis refers to a camel or a leopard. It is in Gemini. Mariga or the deer is located in Orion between Taurus and Gemini. The lion is Leo. The wild bull is Taurus. The rivers are Pisces. The water sign signifying the water. The bull of heaven is Taurus. The shepherd is Aries, as previously mentioned. The milk comes from the Milky Way galaxy, whose center is Sagittarius. The brewer and the fine beer is from barley, which is harvested in Virgo. Ishtar's priestess is Virgo, the woman. The sweet smelling oil is the oil from Libra. The morning, like their own brother, is Gemini, the brothers. So we have Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Sagittarius. Four of the four major points on the zodiac. That's the solstices and the equinox that form the cross. This is the cross that Christ, the Son, carries to his death. 
<clears throat> Gemini, Cancer, Aries to Sagittarius, Aries, Pisces, Aquarius, Sagittarius, Taurus, Leo, Pisces, Virgo. It's just missing Scorpio and Capricorn. This is the Epic of Gilgamesh. They have 10 of the 12 signs in there. Interesting. Enki and the World Order. Father Enki, engendered by a bull, begotten by a wild bull. Great dragon who stands in Aradug. A grove of vines extending over the land where stags are born, where wild goats are born in meadows. You close up the days and make the months enter their houses. The bull is Sagittarius. I'm sorry, the bull is Taurus. The dragon and its tail goes from Aries to Sagittarius. The stag is the deer, which is Mariga, which is in Orion, which is between Taurus and Gemini, and the goats are Capricorn. We have Gemini, Taurus, Aries, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Sagittarius. The month entering their house is speaking of the months being locked into their zodiac houses. There's seven signs right here to open the tablet in a row. In a row. Enki and Nihur Saja. In Dilmun, the raven was not yet calling, the partridge not cackling, the lion did not slay, the wolf was not carrying off lambs, the dog had not been taught to make kids curl up, the pig had not learned yet that the grain was to be eaten. The raven is the constellation Corvus, which means raven and borders on Virgo. The lion is Leo. These two are connecting signs. The wolf is the constellation Lupus, which borders Libra. Three signs in a row. The lamb is Aries, which is the wolf's opposing sign. The dog is Canis Major, which is 11 stars in Cancer. Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra. That's four signs in a row. The pig is a constellation called Porcus which is in the southern sky, which disappears in April. It was supposedly discovered by the Greeks in the 5th century BC, yet the Chinese have had it in their zodiac just as long. In fact, it is not mentioned in Ptolemy's 148 constellations. So there's a little more research that you have to do than, than just use that one thing. But it does predate Ptolemy's list. Ptolemy's list was in 150 AD. Porcus, the pig, was discovered fifth century BC, the Enuma Elish. So that was the Sumerians. And I could probably do a ton more. Uh, Rex Bear is the one who got me to look into the Sumerian tablets. If you've ever seen me on his channel, I've done this with him. Um, actually, he's the one who suggested that I start looking into everything because I was just doing the Bible at the time. I didn't realize it was everything. So I kind of owe him a great, great, great deal of uh, praise. Um, shout out Rex Bear, the Enuma Elish, Babylonian. And Tiamat enlisted a horned snake, a Mushushu dragon, a mad dog, and scorpion man. Half man, half fish, half man, half bull. The horned snake is Ophiuchus. A dragon, Draco, the mad dog, is the dog star Sirius. The scorpion man is Scorpio and Aquarius mix. The half man, half fish is Aquarius Pisces border, which blends the fish with the man sign. And the half man, half bull, which is Aquarius, half Aquarius, half Taurus. The Code of Hammurabi, Babylonian. If a man has stolen ox, sheep, or ass, or pig, or ship, whether from the temple or the palace, he shall pay thirtyfold. The man sign is Aquarius, the ox is Taurus, the sheep is Aries, the ass is a Celis Borealis, or donkey, located in Cancer. The pig is a constellation called Porcus. The ship is a constellation called Argo, which goes from Cancer to Scorpio. So that is actually seven signs total. The Egyptian Book of the Dead. O mighty of knives, lady of the two lands, the one who smashed the enemies of the weary-hearted one, the one who does what is wise, the one free of wrong. The name of its gatekeeper is Long-Horned Bull. What is to be said when arriving at the fifth portal? Words spoken by the Osiris Ani, the vindicated. O fiery one, mistress of heat, the joyful one, the one whom the entities of the bald-headed do not descend, the one who asks that something be given to her without the swift glance entering into her. The name of its gatekeeper is one who spears the disaffected. The lady is Virgo, the woman. The long-horned bull is Taurus, the bull. The spear represents Sagittarius, the man with the bow and the arrow, sometimes translated as spear. And here's where you, here's where they sh tell you about it. The spear is very important. The two most important deaths in the Bible have to do with the spear. There's two. There's plenty of murders in the Bible, but the two most important: Jesus was hit in the side with the spear of destiny, and Cain and Abel the first murder. 
While Cain hit him over the head with a rock, the name Cain in Hebrew actually translates to spear. So you see how deeply encoded this stuff is, guys. Chapter from becoming Ta, eating bread, drinking beer, purifying the hinder parts, and being alive in Heliopolis. What will you live on, say the gods and spirits to me? I will live and have power through bread. Where will you eat it, say the gods and spirits to me? I will have power and I will eat it under the branches of the tree of Hathor, my mistress, who made offering of beer, bread, and corn in Heliopolis. Those who are at Heliopolis bow their heads to me. For I am their Lord, I am their bull. The bread, beer, and corn is all Virgo, remember? When you harvest. The bull is Taurus. Heliopolis is the city of light in Egypt. It was called On. That's why when you go into a room today to become enlightened or turn the lights on, you have to turn the lights on. See, everything is spiritual, guys. Everything is embedded, but it's all spiritual. The Emerald Tablets of Thoth. For he is a menti to the son of man. Notice here he said the son of man, which is how it's supposed to be accurately read. As above, so below. Deep neath the rocks I buried my spaceship, waiting for a time where man might be free. Over the spaceship erected a marker in the form of a lion, yet like unto man, there neath the image rests yet my spaceship forth to be brought when need shall arise. So there is an interdimensional ship. It's three atoms thick. It's buried under one of the chambers under the Sphinx. This is why they will not let you go under the right paw of the Sphinx. They will not let you dig. But astrologically, the lion is Leo and the man is Aquarius. Those are opposing signs. The Book of Enoch. So, all right, we've done the Sumerians. We've done the Bible. We've done Sumerians. We've done the Ethiopians. We've done the Egyptians. Now let's do the Gnostic text. So this is the Book of Enoch. Chapter 8.2, Samjaza taught enchantments, Amaros, the resolving of enchantments, Barakiel taught astrology, Kokobel, the constellations, Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds, Sariel, the course of the moon. And in those days shall the mountains leap like rams, Aries, and the hills shall also speak like lambs, Aries, satisfy with milk, the Milky Way galaxy, Sagittarius. The Gospel of Q, give us our daily bread today, which of you... Would give a child a stone if they asked for bread? Or would you give them a snake if they asked for fish? The bread is Virgo, the snake is Ophiuchus, and the fish is Pisces. Pisces and Virgo are opposing signs. Everyone who divorces his wife and remarries is unfaithful to her, and whomever, whoever marries someone whose divorce is unfaithful too. Which of you, if you had a hundred sheep and lost one of them, wouldn't leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go after the one that got lost? Divorce, marriage, court, law is all Libra. The sheep are Aries, and those are opposing signs. The secret gospel of John. Sophia saw what her desire produced, a change into the form of a dragon with a lion's head. Dragon is the sign Draco. It goes from Aries to Sagittarius. The lion's head is Leo the lion. Aquarius and Leo are opposing signs. Aquarius being part of the, of the tale. The gospel of Thomas. Happy is the lion that a man will eat. The lion will become a man. Cursed is the man whom the lion eats, for that lion will become a man. Talking about ingesting an animal and their components will become part of you, or, or you a part of them. However, in astrology, the lion is the sign Leo. The sign of the man is Aquarius. They are opposing signs on the zodiac. Man is like a skilled angler who casts his net and draws it up full of fish. They're talking about man, Aquarius, and the sign fish, Pisces. These are connecting signs. The Gospel of Mary Magdalene. Mary questioned her master. At the end of an eon will all matter be destroyed. Each zodiac sign is called a house or considered a house. So the house of Aquarius, the house of Pisces, each sign is also called an eon. In Luke 22.10, he replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a, water, a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters. See, what they were doing in the Bible, just, just, just go back to the Bible for a quick second in, in the book of Luke. A man was carrying a jar of water. They told him to meet him, or Jesus told them to meet him and to follow him to his house. That's where they were going to celebrate Passover. Well, the man carrying a jar of water is Aquarius. And the reason you know that is because men never carried water back in the day. That was a feminine job. Believe it or not, they used to have gendered roles back in the day. I know it's crazy, but they used to have gendered roles back in the day. This was one of them. Gospel of Philip. 
When he came to his disciples in splendid glory on the Mount of Olives, he wasn't small. He became great and made his disciples great so he could see them in greatness. On that day, he said in gratitude, you who have united perfect light with Holy Spirit, unite us with the angels as well. Don't scorn the lamb. Without him, it's impossible to know the king. No one may visit the king without robes of light. Well, the olives are Libra and the lamb is Aries. Those are opposing signs. The good Samaritan gave wine and oil to the weak man. Both wine and oil come from Libra. The Gospel of Judas. A nearby lake of still waters quenched our thirst. The place reminded us of David's famed shepherd song, Our Souls Were Restored. The lake of still waters is Pisces the water. The shepherd is in Aries. Those are connecting signs. The Book of Jubilees. And on the second day, he created the firmament in the midst of the waters. And the waters were divided on that day. Half of them went above and half of them went below the firmament. We already did this, guys. Gospel of Emmanuel, discovered by Billy Meyer. You brood of vipers, in two times a thousand years, you and your descendants who carry on false teaching out of your own pride from motives of power and greed shall be punished and your lives destroyed. So it will be when the human race begins to comprehend and separate the wheat from the chaff. It is immediately followed that passage. The wheat is Virgo. That's when you separate the wheat from the chaff. This is astrotheology. The false teachings are the literal teachings make. But as Jemmanuel predicts, that in 2,000 years the truth will come to light. This is a passage we hear often. It tells you that in the new age of Aquarius, this has been predicted to come to light. Nevertheless, do not heed these false teachings, because millennia will pass before the people of these human races will be able to recognize the truth. Hence, following the fulfillment of your mission, centuries and two millennia will pass before the truth of your knowledge brought among the people will be recognized and disseminated by some humans. Another example. The earth, here's the interesting one, guys. The earth can nourish and support 500 million people of all the human races. But if these laws are not followed in 2,000 years, 10 times 500 million people will exist. And the earth will not be able to support them anymore. Where have we heard the 500 million before? This gospel was discovered in 1963, maybe something that was created in 1980. And incidentally, if this was at the time of Christ, if you multiply 10 times 500 million, that's 5 billion. That kind of lines up, right? Well, where's the 500 million from? Oh, the Georgia Guidestones, right. That got blown to bits. Good for them. Since the human races will at the time comprise far more than 10 times 500 million people, great parts of them will be eradicated and killed. This is where I've traced the 500 million guys, by the way, that they're always talking about. Truly I say to you, from now on I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vineyard, nor eat of the bread until I drink and eat again with you after my affliction. The grapes are Libra. That's the fruit of the vineyard, and the bread is Virgo. Those are connecting signs. Here we go. The Quran. Those who do not know say, why has not the Lord turned the word to us? And why will he not show us a sign from heaven? A sign from heaven. Similar words were spoken by those who came before them. Their hearts are alike. We interpret the signs for those who are committed to the faith with all their soul. And how beautifully all the people see the love of earthly possessions. Here are women and sons. There are mountains of silver and gold and marked horses and herds of cattle in a plowed field. Women are Virgo, the sign of the woman. The sons are the boys in Gemini. Horses are Sagittarius and cattle is Taurus. A plowed field is Taurus as well. Taurus and Gemini are connecting signs. Gemini and Sagittarius are opposing signs. Verily in the creation of earth and sky, and in the change of night to day, here are the hidden signs for those who have intelligence. This is the Quran, guys. The Quran. The hidden signs are the zodiac. And among them are those who only pretendingly listens to you. We put a cover on their hearts so that they would not understand it. And we covered their ears with deafness. And even if they see all the signs, they will not believe them. You see how easy it is to read this, guys, once you understand this? I know we, we came a long way to get here, but he is the one who brings down water to you from the sky. 
and with it we give plants of all kinds to grow. And with it we grow shoots of cereals, from them we grow grains, sitting in an ear of dense side by side. From the date palm, its ovaries, bunches of fruit hanging low, gardens of vines, olives, pomegranates, which in many ways are so similar, yet so different from each other. When fruits appear on them, rejoice in how they are poured and ripened. Truly, in this are hidden signs for those who believe in God. The grains are planted in Taurus, then April showers bring May flowers, water from the sky. We went over that. The grains grow, reap in Virgo, gardens of vines and olives, grapes and olives are pressed in Libra. These are the hidden signs you need to know. And whoever wants to own a beautiful garden of date palms and vines, which is washed by abundant streams, where for his pleasure all kinds of fruits, while old age befalls him, and the children are weak, so that a fiery world falls, whirlwind falls on the gardens and swallows it all to ashes. So the Lord explains his signs to you so that you can understand. The vines are vineyards in Libra, and the streams are the streams in the water sign of Pisces and Aquarius. God explains these 12 signs to you so you can understand, so you can decode this. The Book of Mormon. Nevertheless, I went forth, and as I came near unto the house of Laban, I beheld a man, and he had fallen to the earth before me, for he was drunken with wine. Yeah, and I also thought that they could not keep the commandments of the Lord according to the law of Moses, save they should have the law. Both wine and lawly things take place in Libra. And after the house of Israel should be scattered, they should be gathered together again. Or in fine, after the Gentiles had received the fullness of the gospel, the natural branches of the olive tree, or the remnants of the house of Israel should be grafted in, or come to the knowledge of the true Messiah, their Lord and their Redeemer. Therefore remember, O man, for all thy doings thou shalt be brought to judgment. Olives take place in Libra, and the judgment takes place in Libra. And my father said he should baptize in Bethabara, beyond Jordan. And he also said he should baptize with water, even that he should baptize the Messiah with water. And after he had baptized the Messiah with water, he should behold and bear record that he had baptized the Lamb of God, who should take away the sins of the world. Baptism is literally Aquarius, and the Lamb of God is Aries. <clears throat> and I looked and beheld the Lamb of God that he was taken by the people. Yeah, the son of the everlasting God was judged of the world. And I saw and bear record. The lamb of God is Aries. The son of God or son of man is Aquarius. Judging takes place in Libra. Libra and Aries are opposing signs. So that's 6,000 years, guys. That's the Bible. And that's every holy text. Now, I just wanted to just share this with you real quick. This is a crazy Christian that I follow on Twitter, the book of Revelation. Opening your third eye, Christ consciousness, chakras, yoga, reincarnation, astrology, numerology are all part of the new age deception. Stay far away from them. Notice how everything they call new age deception, all of them are actually older than the Bible, the story of Christ, even the creation of the devil. Isn't that interesting? So if you guys enjoyed this, I have a book series where I, it's, it, they're very much like um, 1984 meets uh, Da Vinci Code, the way that I, I teach through fiction. I talk about gematria, etymology, numerology, astronomy, astrology, astro, theology, out-of-body experiences, the Akashic records, symbology, remote viewing, seek, religious secrets, capstones of the pyramids, DNA encoding, mystery school channelers, near-death experience, DMT monitoring, Lucid dreaming, acoustic levitation, physics, and quantum physics. Psychotherapy, psychology, spiritual guides, and shared dreaming. Crystal technology, conspiracies that not many people know about. Corruptions and secret societies. And this is my book series, guys. There's going to be a ninth one that I'm going to write in about half a year. But these are my eight books, starting top left and then down to the four. Incidentally, Pangea's Pandemic came out right around the time of our pandemic and i predicted the whole thing so if you read this series get to book four i also have a kid's book a is for aries where i teach the signs and the information to children it's for six to eleven year olds i wrote it with my astrologer priscilla who's amazing 
And uh, this is the book. And once again, guys, my point once again is not that those ancient people told literal stories and we are not smart enough to take them symbolically, but that they told them symbolically. We are now dumb enough to take them literally. That's John Dominic Croissant. So look at this picture, guys. We talked about it earlier, right? The star in the sky is always Polaris. You see the sheep, that's Aries. The bull, that's Taurus. That's connecting signs. The camel, that's Camelopardalis, right? That's in Gemini. That's three signs in a row. The donkey, Acellus Borealis in Cancer. That's four signs in a row. You see the alchemical clothing. Jesus, the newborn with the sun behind his head. Virgin, Mary, Virgo, right? The sun behind Jesus' head because he is the sun. The man is Aquarius. There's also a horse. That's Sagittarius. Opposing sign of the donkey in Cancer 7 Zodiac signs is in this picture, just so that you know. Update, the three wise men are the three stars in Orion's belt, which is between Taurus and Gemini. And they brought frankincense and myrrh, which is uh, Libra, because they're olive plants. So as I wrap up, guys, I just want you to know, the scriptures are metaphysical, astrological, which I only teach the astrology part anatomical, alchemical, spiritual, esoteric, and mythology. It's also a gematria book, an etymology book, numerology, symbology, and psychedelic book. Twelve holy sciences in the Bible, just like the Zodiac. I only teach one of them. Can you imagine how incredible this book is, that people are taking it literally? This is not literal, it's not history, it's not reality, and it's not original. The German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer once said that all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. Third, is it accepted as self being self-evident? What is more likely, guys, that the Bible is a living, breathing book that revelations keep coming true, or that the ancient elites have encoded all our texts this way and are tailoring events that people can interpret as coming true? It's Occam's razor, right? Bunkmywork.com. That's my website. Four years I'm going on. Nobody will challenge me. Debunkmywork.com. On that website, you can get every video I've done, all my social medias, my YouTube channel. And at the bottom, there's a little area where you can send an email directly to me. And um, good God, two and a half hours. This is the history of the world, guys. This is what they don't want you to know. And this is what's going to get out there now. Because it has to. Because we have to evolve. This is how you get peace. You destroy the religions. This is how you get peace. This is the key. So please share this. Share this. Share this. Share this. Get it out there. I'm going to be doing my own marketing towards the end of the year. But please get this out there, guys. Share this. This is a one-stop video for everything. So God bless you all. I love you. And I'll talk to you soon.